Hey everybody, I'm Nick Von Walkerbarth and you're listening to the Von Dubcast. I like to do a little bit of intro where I talk about what's happening in my life, um, a little bit of background on the guest, what I felt going into the interview, what I thought of the interview, and uh, just whatever else is going on. If you'd like to jump right to the interview, you can skip to 10 minutes. And if not, we have one sponsor and we'll get right into it. Today's episode is brought to you by Freshie and Grand Prairie. Freshie is a, uh, it's kind of like a mixture between fast food and health food. It's quick, it's easy, and you get delicious, healthy food. It's a pillar in my uh, journey to try and be healthy. It's usually uh, sometimes the only thing I do that's healthy in a day, but it's always there for me and I really enjoy it. If you're ever in GP, please stop by and check them out. And if you do, please tell them you heard about them here on the Von Dubcast. All right, welcome back, everybody. We got a great guest today, Brendan Murphy. He's been on the podcast before. He's one of my good buddies. Uh, really intelligent, really capable guy. Always really respect what he has to say. Um, it was great to get him back on the podcast. This is his second appearance. If you want to check him out, I think he was somewhere around the 30s. If you want to go uh, listen to the first episode, I really enjoyed that one, and I enjoyed this one as well. It was uh, a bit of a different one. I uh, I'm not too happy with uh, my performance on this podcast. I think I. Uh, and and I'll try and break that down for you guys a little bit. I think I just, um, A, was lazy, didn't prepare enough, um, didn't do my meditations before. I had uh, my dog, Ahsoka, and she was uh, jumping all over Brennan and was really uh, throwing me for a loop, and it was hard to lock in. And then um, I kind of was going into it. I didn't have any questions written down. I thought uh, I had kind of had an idea of where I thought this conversation was going to go, and then it really um, didn't go there, and I was unprepared, and that's on me. And uh you know, I just couldn't get out of first gear. I felt like my ideas just, I, I couldn't connect to the second and the third. I couldn't get into that flow state. And uh, because of that, I was kind of conceding points on on a lot of this uh, COVID stuff uh, with Brennan that I probably shouldn't have conceded because I thought, oh, I'll get them on the next one. But then I kept doing it. I kept doing it. I kept conceding them. And I feel like I didn't represent myself very well um, in this conversation, which is not to say anything. You know, Brennan's a really smart guy. And I think he was uh, a lot of times just playing devil's advocate. And I think that was difficult too, because it was tough at times because I knew he's playing devil's advocate and he even says so a couple times in the podcast at a certain point, but it was hard to, uh, I think what was necessary of me in this conversation was to get a little bit, you know, to dig in a little bit and to, uh, to be a little more abrasive maybe and, and, and to really stand behind some of these points. And because I really enjoy Brandon and I valued his time and he drove through a goddamn snowstorm to get there, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. And then once he didn't do it once, he kind of, I kind of laid back and was on my heels the whole time. And I, also enjoyed that too because um I don't know it just it forces you to really play in a different realm of of the conversation and it brought up some different topics and I think Brendan really brought up a lot of great points uh as well and I think I would feel great about that if I had also got some great points across but I feel like my points were just piss poor and um I was, yeah, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not very happy with myself. I think I was supposed to, uh, not supposed to, I'm not supposed to do anything, but I was thinking about releasing this episode last week as a, as kind of a, uh, the second episode of the week. But I, I told myself a bunch of different stories, but really, if I'm honest with myself, I think I'm just a little bit, uh, a little bit embarrassed at my performance on this. I mean, uh, you guys probably won't even be able to tell, and it's probably just me holding myself to high standards, but especially on something that means so much to me. And then um, going through the week that I went through, it was an amazing week. I went down to Slave Lake and got to see some old buddies and stuff, and I really, really needed that. I didn't realize how much I needed that. But uh, one of the things that was also kind of sad was to have to you know, run around my hometown like a criminal because I'm unvaccinated and to sneak into the arena to see my friends and you know, couldn't go to the bars, couldn't, couldn't do anything. And, uh, I know some of you are screaming, we'll just go get your shot. And, uh, you know what, uh, that's maybe a decent argument if you hear how shitty I am at defending myself in this one. But I think if you go back and listen to some of my other podcasts, I have some really good reasoning why I believe I, I don't want to do that and why I stand behind it and why I'm fucking terrified of the authoritarian creep we're seeing more and more every day and how I really believe that we all need to stand up. And that's why this one hurts me so bad that I didn't do a good job of making that case, uh, today, but I'm going to do better on the next one and I'm going to, I'm going to learn from it and hopefully I'll be able to bring some of those points to light that highlight that. But yeah, it was a little bit tough to, uh, I mean, I think it's the realization that, uh, this is going to be here for a long time and it's only getting worse and, uh, freedoms are only going to be, uh, <clears throat> more under fire as we move forward. is kind of scary to me. And, uh, I think I've talked about a lot of times of, Oh, it doesn't affect me. And the reason it doesn't affect me was because, well, I didn't follow the rules anyway. I never did from the very start when they were restricting outdoor gatherings and stuff. I said that silly, that follows no science. And I followed the actual science of what was coming out and was safe that way. It wasn't that I was following no rules. I just <clears throat> was not trusting these people that are clearly 
have ulterior motives to to dictate those rules to me, right? And that uh, has been kind of changed now that they come out with this QR code. It really prevents any living of life. You know, you can't go into any stores, you can't go in anywhere, you can't really see anybody. And just the treatment of a second class citizen and the looks you get and and the inconvenience you are on everybody. Like the whole time, I just don't want to be an inconvenience to anyone. And Everyone in Slave Lake was so nice at trying to change plans and, oh, we don't need to go for dinner. Like, you won't be able to get into Boston Pizza, which blows my mind. You know, I know the owners I've known. I probably know everyone working there. I, uh, it just, it hurts. It hurts, guys. And I and I know that if you're on the other side of this, you probably have no sympathy, no compassion for that and for me. And and that's fine, too. I can try and wrap my head around that. But, man, it's... it's uh, it's not as easy as it was, you know, like, uh, and I, I think it's just going to get harder. And I think at some point it's going to become, you know, you got to get to the point where you, you got to leave and you got to go find somewhere that does, you know, still value freedom. And I, I hope it doesn't get to that point, but just, uh, yeah, you know, I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, down on, on, on just where things are headed and, 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 and that people are so gung ho to, uh, to just, uh, burn all the witches and, and, and follow along with whatever's being pushed and, and, and all this. There's some really great episodes coming out of uh, podcasts that are highlighting these stories from around the world in Australia, what's happening. And, uh, and, and that gives me hope. Um, uh, uh, what's his pickle? Russell Brand, he's been just on fire lately with his YouTube channel, of just really bringing things to light and using his comedic skills that he's so finely honed over the years to really poke holes in some of this, you know, so-called logic that they're using to, uh, to run this whole thing. And, and, and now that numbers are starting to come out and they're starting to show that, the, like I've been saying, the response is not helping. It is making things worse, arguably, right? Like there's, there's a really good case that, you know, since the vaccine rollout in 2021, there's been more deaths than, than 2020. And they try to say, oh no, that's just unvaccinated people. It's like, oh yeah, sure. You know, like that, that's just silly. And I think me and Brendan probably got into this and this is the other thing. It was tough, uh, tough to uh, try and remember back to this conversation because I think I just tried to block it out because of how uh, embarrassed I was of myself uh, in this. So I'm trying to remember exactly what we said. And, oh, I remember one part, you know, I was trying to make a point about um, people passing up the bu- the buck, up up the chain of command uh, so that they don't have to deal with anything. I couldn't even come up with any examples in, 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 the, in the moment. And then as soon as the episode ended, I thought of like 30 and, and like, ah, uh, I'm just a little embarrassed, but I think that's good. And I think that's good for you guys to see, uh, maybe me not at my best and, and, uh, and, and, and that's good for me to, to learn that I need to do all those things to make sure I'm in, in that zone where I can argue for these really important pieces that mean a lot to me. Right. Um, in the best way that I can. And I promise you guys in the next one, I sure, I sure damn well. Uh, and, uh, yeah, other than that, um, apologies for the dog being an absolute nut throughout the podcast. Uh, she was jumping all over Ren and I was trying to get her settled down. She probably hears some bark. She probably made a, a guest appearance more than once on this podcast. I hope you guys forgive her. She's pretty cute. Um, other than that, I'm hoping to do a solo podcast kind of on uh, my awesome trip to Slave Lake, everything I got to do and kind of m- maybe break down more of what I'm feeling with this stuff. So I'm hoping to maybe get that done either today or tomorrow, then uh, have some great episodes that I was able to record in Slave Lake and some from my trip to Edmonton that I recorded this one with Brendan. So there's some great ones in the can and uh, some plans to uh, to get maybe some of the bigger guests that uh, you guys enjoyed on um, so far back on the podcast in the future, uh, maybe hopefully before Christmas, but may, might have to be after and all that. So I hope you guys, as we roll into this uh, Christmas holiday season, I hope you guys uh, are filled with love and, and, and you get to be around family. Oh, and that's the other thing. It's Christmas trying, you know, uh, talking about not wanting to be a, a bother. That's the other depressing thing is just seeing everyone scramble to try and figure out all this Christmas stuff around, you know, me and it, oh, I just hate it. It breaks my heart to, uh, to, to watch this, you know, like, oh man, I'm getting emotional. He, whew. Um, yeah, it's, it's just tough. It's, 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 it's for somebody, you know, I, I try so hard all the time to try and find compassion for everybody in everyone's situation to see where they come from and just to see how little that is, how, how little you see that in, in return is, uh, is, is a bit sad. So I'm going to get off my soapbox of all this crying and, and, and being a baby. And I'm going to let you guys enjoy this show. I don't want to sound like this is a negative show. I think this conversation was awesome. I had a great time recording it. I don't say that. I'm just wish I would have been better in it. And even then, like I said, it's probably just me being hard on myself and you guys can judge for yourself. So hope you guys enjoy and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.
Boom. Big Murph in the house. How the fuck you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. How's uh, life at the SU? Oh, no complaints. You no know? complaints? Yeah. How much has things changed since last time we chatted? Is school more back in swing now? Is there more people like on campus? Are you starting to see a little bit of hustle and bustle yet? So, yeah. School is back, but like yeah. that is it. Everything else, nothing is back. There's no extra collicker. No. Whatever that word is. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what no. I just tried to say there. And then there's just been so much like crazing it like constant changes from the mm-hmm. government mm-hmm. like when they announced the restrictions exemption program i want to say yeah. like all the universities in the province just shut down for two days because they announced it like 5 30 wednesday night and everyone was like well we don't know what we're doing tomorrow yeah so yeah just yeah. things like that i mean hell i mean you see it everywhere though mm-hmm. too like you mm-hmm. go out to the bar places yeah. are a quarter full of where they used to be that sort right. of thing Right, kind of everything. I haven't been to a bar in so long, I couldn't even tell you. Oh, so, yeah. But like looking at even Oilers game, that's the one that big that sticks out to mm-hmm. me the most is like we went to an Oilers game a couple weeks back um, on Monday. Me and my dad were both there and we were going to another game on Wednesday and we're talking with the guys that we're going to on Wednesday. They said, oh, how full was it on Monday? And Ingle went and like, oh, I think it was pretty full maybe up top. And I said, I don't think so. I was like, it looked pretty <laughs> empty to me. Like I, I, th- I saw a lot of open seats and then we get there. And, oh, we'll look today. And yeah, sure enough, like it, it's probably, you know, a good at least 20 percent of the capacity is empty there like it which yeah at an edmonton oilers game never happens like i well, can't yeah, even remember last time i've seen that it's normally like pretty close to a lot well it's even i've been to two elk games this season yeah and i mean granted now the elks are doing like dog <laughs> yeah. shit. and they changed their name to something fucking stupid like yeah. the elks. but i mean yeah. like i still think there was a lot of community support so i went to their home opener yeah. though the home opener they didn't do a halftime show or anything because it was like they were still like feeling out the covid stuff and all that and this was before the rep was announced wow but i would say they announced like that there was 21,000 I want to say it was like 21,000 people in the stands there was no way like yeah. nine tops yeah. and then I went to a game a few weeks ago and like granted uh th- it was against Hamilton they lost by like I can't even remember how much it was ridiculous yeah. but by the end of it I would say there was like 2,000 people in those stands at most me and my friend buddy were sitting in like bottom bowl pretty close to center uh i don't know like probably at the like 40 50 uh, 40 yard line yeah and at the end of the game we were there was like maybe two dozen people in our section really yeah every wow. well and it was cold out yeah that helps. people just left it was losing the team's been losing all year but still like people just haven't come back yeah it's tough to see it's tough to see stuff like that that you would think would be very much uh resistant to to whatever it is, all those other factors that go into yeah. it, right? Like there's a million factors that cause people to stay home with it, with that stuff, right? Fear, all this other stuff, the, the taboos and all that. But you'd think certain things like, I would have never guessed oil games. I thought regardless of how scared people are, whatever factors that keep people at home, it's not well, going to keep you from an Oiler game. like. Well, but also, too, I think, like, season tickets are probably way down because people don't know. Like, mm-hmm. they're, they're going to invest all this money and then, like, not see it. Well, um, I, I also know of at least 20 season tickets, like a bunch of different groups of people, but like 20 tickets total um, for both Calgary and Edmonton that as soon as they put the vaccine mandate in place that they all gave up their seats, right? Which is certain demographic of people that have those seats that have certain feelings about it. But like, I think that's also a piece of it too, that people are just like, well, I'm not doing this. Or if I'm, the other thing, if you're going to make me sit there and wear a mask the whole game, which I've been to a couple other games, nobody wears a mask in the whole fucking building. And it's so yeah. funny on the, on the, on the camera, like, you know, in between periods or, or in between plays are showing like people on the jumbotron, just like the excitement of it. There's probably 95% of the people in there don't have masks on, but like when they show the screen, they're just finding the couple people in the crowd that are and putting them on the screen. It's like, Oh my God. Well, that's I hilarious. mean, they have to, to like yeah. keep it locked down. Right. But, and so they're not getting in trouble, right. but the world juniors are coming up too in Edmonton. And so they were, it was supposed to be last year. Mm-hmm. They still did it here, but they did it in the bubble. Right. So now they got all these people coming in from international and you just like, don't know what's going on. But yeah, that's another example. Like me and my dad bought tickets to that, Two, three years three, ago. Three years ago, yeah. yeah my like dad forever. got tickets too, yeah. yeah. And so that's probably been holding a lot of people back from like mm-hmm. wanting to pick up season tickets or whatever. Yeah, yeah, because is it, is it even going to happen, right? Like there's, it's just that uncertainty piece. There's so much uncertainty with so many things. Dog, out of here. Lay down. <laughs> oh, this dog is going to be a fun one the rest of this podcast. But like, you know, it's, it's, it's uncertainty that is the biggest factor for so much of this stuff, right? Like there's so many people that are like 80% of the way to wanting to make a decision, but that 20% of uncertainty 
knock so many things off the board, so many of these plans, so many of these things, right? Like everyone just keeps saying, ah, in, in a little bit, right? In, in a couple more months, couple more months. But at a certain point, you have to wonder how many more, how many more months can you can you mm. keep saying that, right? Like at a at a certain point, when do you uh, start to either I don't know, like push back or just start saying, you know, uncertainty be damned. I need to book something. I need to live my life. Like it's, it's, it's very much. And I think that's different for everybody. Everyone's going to have a different limit when it kind of pushes them to that point. And I think it's funny for me because I was, you know, that point hit me about like three days in, in March of 2020. Cause I'm such a, I don't know what you want to call me, you know, uh, uh, just, uh, I don't go along with things very, very nicely. Right. So I was pushed to that point right away and started to ask questions and, and, and get onto certain things right away. But you know, there's people that really didn't want to do that. They just wanted to, to, to do the right thing, to be on the right side of this and just kind of follow the directions and okay, well, a couple more months, a couple more months. But I would imagine that there's probably got to be a huge contingent of people that have said like, Hey, I've done everything right. I have followed the rules. I did. I jumped when you said jump. I ducked when you said duck and all the things that were promised that went along with that have never come to fruition. Well, I mean, I probably said this last time, but I remember, I don't know, maybe a few months into it, I was attending uh, some virtual, like back when virtual conferences were still yeah. like fun and interesting because it was something yeah, new. Yeah. Uh, I was attending something with uh, a bunch of like venue, like managers and mm-hmm. CEOs from across the world. Yeah. And I remember one guy, he was either out of New York or London said like two years, this is going to be a two year thing. Mm-hmm. That's how long it took the Spanish flu in like 1918. Yeah. It was two years. And so we're coming up, you know, we're what? three, four months off two years yeah. now. And yeah. it is definitely dying out. Yeah. Like things are, I don't think there's going to be another, there might be a little bit uptick now that's like start snowing in Alberta. I think there will be for sure. Yeah. More people are like forced indoors to do things right. there, but I don't think there's going to be like another wave of people. Mm. And I think this is kind of like, we're definitely in the end game of this now. Yeah. I think regardless, they're going to stir up just for how much, power and ratings and news cycles they get out of it i think they're gonna ramp it up one more time and and and, and get everyone make sure they're nice and scared again right like i just think that's their playbook and there's so much money in it it's it's almost not even a blame thing it's just like are they going to leave that money on the table or are they going to scoop it up and put it in their pockets right like that's essentially what it comes down to at a certain point that that's where i've been looking at this with because when you look at it from like a um uh policy standpoint in terms of actual, you know, suffering and, and, and health, none of this really makes sense. But when you look at it through a more of a capitalistic lens and, and a power lens, a lot of this makes more sense to me, right. Of like what they're doing with it because. Yeah. But I, I mean, personally, I think that's also a very American point of view. Like that's mm-hmm. a Amer- very American mindset of it. Yeah. Like, yeah, there's a bit, a bit of money in it for Canadian, the what one major Canadian news organization or right, two, but right. like there's not enough, I think for right. the Canadian news organizations to like get anything out of this and there's no benefit in it for the government. All the governments across the country are all in shit because of this. No one is happy with anybody. Right. But at the same time, like, like, you know, where I stand on this, it doesn't matter right or left, the government's all the same people and they all benefit from the same lobbyists and all this stuff. And, and, and that's why it doesn't matter is they all got to set the goalposts of, Hey, this is what we're, you know, we get to set, what the expectations are, right? And they set it as cases and deaths. That's that's how they got to set the parameters of how they're going to be judged. The politician said, hey, everybody, this is what we're going to judge this on. And now we get to set that parameter. And now we get to put policy in place that only goes to that. It doesn't look at mental health, doesn't look at any of these other factors because that's really hard to judge on and we're probably going to get killed on it. If we can just keep it looked at through this one lens, we can come out of this looking not good because clearly everyone's mad at everybody, but it's it's nobody's happy, but it's equal, right? Like nobody's stepping up. Nobody wants to put their head up. Yeah. But I mean, also too, like those are the KPIs for this thing. Yeah. You could look at like mental health, but like you said, that's way too complicated of a thing. And that's a multi-year, like Mm -hmm. the mental health effects and the studies that come out of mental health of this, Mm -hmm. they're going to be coming out for the next 15 years, but it's going to take them that long to come up with like a definitive answer to that sort of thing. For sure. Like how many active cases and how many deaths there are. That's, those are the things you can measure now. Right. But, but I remember but, talking like early, pretty early on to the pandemic to a friend and he was like, because you could get like early on, you could get all the numbers for Alberta every single day, like mm-hmm. right off the bat. And in the US to the point, it's like they could only release numbers on like Fridays or something like that. And they were like, oh, I don't understand that. Why can't they do it? And it's because, well, in Alberta, we have one health board. When you go to the US in a state, you have 
everything's independent. It would be like if you were trying to get every single, I don't know, coffee shop in Alberta to report their daily numbers. There's be no way that Mm -hmm. all those corporations can't work together. But in Canada, they have, you know, what, 13 provinces and territories. So that's how many, like, you have to call 13 people each day to get their numbers and that's it. For sure. And, and, and I completely agree with that. And I think that's a really good point. And maybe that's a piece of it that I was missing, to be honest, because. But also, too, it. I mean, that comes to the like the mental health thing, too. It's when you're dealing with deaths and you're dealing with like uh, how many people are infected. It does come from 13 people. But there's a lot of private like mental health, like psycho- psychiatry and all that sort of stuff. Right. That they are part of the bigger system, but they're also mm-hmm. like they're not integrated to the same level right so it's a lot harder to track that stuff down and it's like what are you going to focus on for sure and 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 i and i completely agree with that and kind of where 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 i see it is maybe there's a middle ground between those two like 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 you say the kpis of of uh, active cases and deaths are are so easy nothing's easy to count but comparatively to something like mental health that is so nebulous right from a purely number standpoint it is easy to count for sure right like doing the math and having to do the tally it's like Mm -hmm. yeah this is something that's a lot easier to just put on the books than the other one so then i think if i if i take myself back to like the start of this thing and if there was conversations around like instead of just letting the politicians tell us what the metrics that this was going to be judged on those easy kpis dog hey off off Oh boy, that's gonna be that's gonna get old. Um, what was I saying? Sorry, I, I think there's a hey, lay down. There's a, a middle ground there where you could, if you had a conversation, you could say, the politicians say we want this to be measured on cases and deaths. And it's like, well, as a people, that doesn't really help us. That's gonna create a lot of fear. That's not really gonna be something that is net positive in the outcome. And we think it misses a lot of other things. Could we maybe try to to dog? What the hell? sit with daddy oh now you're gonna be mad oh yes um like something like say hospitalizations like we need a number of available de- beds that are staffed versus available beds currently in use with covid right still less nebulous than something like mental health where you can't really put numbers on it. you're still going to ask them it's more difficult than than what they're using but at least now there's some accountability right and now if but you lose I- half your healthcare staff but I think those numbers are actually out there. But they're not being, but that's not what every news yeah, channel that's is. What, yeah, that's is. because it's like, it's a lot more complicated to understand. A few months ago, I saw someone quoted to me, they were talking about how the healthcare system's not as overloaded as people said they are. And I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, well, look at this news article. According to this news article in Alberta, 98% of ICU beds are open. And I'm like, no, that can't be right. And I spent literally 25 seconds looking more into it. it yeah. A, the stat had been published in like Rebel News. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, you look into it for 25 more seconds and yeah, 98% of beds were open. But when they said open, they meant as in available for use and not currently closed not, for maintenance. Yeah. And, and and not like staffed and stuff. And that and that's the biggest thing people. But so like, I think it's like, no, you can't report, don't report on that number because people start reporting on that number and then other people that don't decide to actually look into what does open mean. Right. Don't. The, like with social media everything is so quick so everyone yeah. would love that if that number blew up on social media people would love it oh 98 percent. like look at they're lying to us and it's like no but they mean open as in like can be used right and that's too complicated for a 144 character word post for sure i i agree with that but then there's the exact same thing that you just described, I think, is happening on the other side where there, there's stories coming out that these hospitals are completely overrun. And when you really look into it, they're like uh, the last time I was in a hospital, they're, you know, one wing and I walked through the hospital trying to find the x-ray part. It was like ghost town. Like I couldn't see there was whole yeah, wings and be- floors of hospitals that are empty. Right. And I'm yeah, not. That's because they had to close whole wings and floor. Right. And also they fully separated if you have COVID versus you don't have COVID. Right. And the COVID stuff was so taxing mm-hmm. to the hospital system that like most of the people, most of the staff were working in yeah. the COVID stuff. Yeah. And and everybody was pretty much on the COVID, right? Like my, uh, my, my brother-in-law, Liam, like he's, he's a, a physio and he was uh, put on the COVID ward. I know dog, you want to go outside in a bit, come lay down. Uh, and, and, and that's just what was expected, right? Everyone pretty much got put there. And then not only that, but here's the thing of like, what they hear, what the what the population hears, is that our 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 medical system is being overrun and overrun and overrun, and, and it's getting fuller and fuller capacity, which is true in a sense, but also 
is part of that the numbers going up or is that people quitting us losing staff us not paying people right which is not to argue that that's not uh yeah i mean like, all that stuff's related it, it's all related but that's what i'm saying but it, but it doesn't i feel like it takes the it ta- it it takes the onus away. It takes all accountability away from these politicians that are underpaying, that are treating our healthcare staff like shit, that are making them quit, that are making them walk out of these jobs. And now we have half the staff that we should because we've absolutely, these people that we're, you know, banging pots for and trying to do all this shit. But in reality, we're not paying them. We're not paying them overtime. We're not giving them what they need and they're all quitting. And now we have, now our, our healthcare system is, is really taxed because we have half the capacity that, that we should. It's like, okay, now should we be able, now we're, can you put that all blame on COVID, right? Which is easy. All these politicians, yeah, COVID's really a hit to the healthcare system. It's like, for sure it is. But also, is there any malfeasance that you guys have in place? Or is there any accountability to even check? Hey, what is with you today? Probably because you sat in a truck all day. Um, enough. Um, right? Like, I yeah, just, okay, I guess. The, but like, what's your point? My point is that what's unfair to me is that the people that should have some accountability, like the politicians that are have any say in what these policies get put forward, there's no accountability and they get to set their own metrics on what they're going to be judged for. And there's so many of these confounding factors that would really highlight. <laughs> I'm not. Dog. I'm not. I'm not. What are you doing? What are you doing jumping on people? Okay. One sec guys, we're going to take a pause and we're going to get put someone in a cage and she's not going to like it. Oh, yeah, yo, what an intermission. This dog, she is just going to be the death of me, I tell you. So anybody listening, I, for some reason, this dog's been pretty good lately, but she's gotten into a phase right now where she's jumping on people. And right as soon as Brandon rolled up, she was just jumping, 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 wouldn't leave him alone. And as we're sitting here, I put her blanket down and her food and her bone. I thought she'd chill out and kind of just be calm while we podcast, but she just will not stop jumping up on Brandon <laughs> at the end there. What well, you guys probably heard all the commotion. She didn't, didn't just put her paws up, literally jumped full up onto like Brendan's chest as he's sitting here podcasting the little things. So now we've got her, we let her outside, had a little pee and she's on a leash now. So she can't jump on Brendan. Yeah. She got like full up on my shoulder. I was like, right? yeah. <laughs> she's a little acrobat this thing. I think it's cause she's a mountain dog. She thinks she can just climb anything she wants. Yeah. But she's like 85% fur. So pretty much. Exactly pretty much. Heavy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, lay down. Be good. No more interruptions. I know you're just a little Hollywood dog and you want to be on the podcast, but you can't. Okay, you can be good? Sorry. I don't know what we're talking about. Something important. Oh, the uh, the hospital stuff. Yeah, I just... And I feel like this is a tough point to make because I feel like this is the same... Ish, this is just one contingent of the same point I'm making along the way of just... There's no accountability and all these policies get made behind closed doors, right? Like, like we said, like something that's so nebulous that you can't even really put a put a number on it, like the mental health aspects. I totally get that as something that you can't focus on right now, but even just to pay some lip service to it of like, hey, we care about this and this is something that we matter. Like we know we are in the background, but just the fact that none of this policy has any sort of accountability or any sort of transparency on why or any data backing it up, that's what gets my hair up and why even that, like even I could go I could go along with a lot better if they did some of that stuff, but like I don't know. I would at least try like to see I mean, some sort of transparency on why you're doing this. Cause then I could, at least you could pay lip service to these things that the community is hope that you're looking at, but uh, it doesn't seem like it. Like to play devil's advocate though. Yeah. On, like those points, like a, just to like pay lip service for it is like, it doesn't help anybody. Yeah. And you know what? Like both in Alberta, both government, governments at all levels have gotten in trouble for just being like, yeah, like we know, but like, you know, focusing on other things. Um, and the other the other thing too is like even and like I'm not saying anyone was right and anyone was wrong here, but like they roll out something like the RDP, like the mm-hmm. I can't even something remember exemption what, plan, yeah, yeah, restricted exemption program yeah. or whatever. It's Ask called. people if they have a vaccine and they and yeah, you can stay yeah. open. If not, but even then, it's like me. it takes the businesses like being like having run a be running a bunch of businesses. It takes us like a week to figure it out. Yeah. And like I said at the beginning, like the university had to shut down for two days while they yeah. figured out their response to it. Right. But, and I mean, granted, I think like the government didn't do a great job rolling it out and there's been a lot of gray areas, but yeah. I also got to think that like the same way it takes us this long to figure out when they roll something like that out. Mm. And you know, that's all that like multiple staff work on every day. It's like, they're struggling with the same things yeah. just on a different level. They're right. figure they have all this, there's all this data out there. A, and someone needs to analyze it and someone yeah. needs to 
needs to then come up and make a decision and you need to write all this stuff and then you yeah. need to think about okay every type of business every type of edge case and it's like yeah you know that's what the government's there for but right. in an era of like when people do like smaller government they don't have these resources anymore yeah. to deal with this stuff it's yeah. like it's easy enough to blame the people like at the top but it's like there's only so many hours in a day right and 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 i i agree with like the the rollout and how like you need to give if you remain agnostic over what the plan is that they're rolling out and just look at it, if, okay, this is what they've decided and this is what we're rolling out, you need to give some grace on how they're rolling it out, right? I think that is silly to attack something for the for the implementation when we clearly know how difficult those things are to, to implement. My question is more to back up a couple steps before that, before they rolled that plan out, to have any sort of discussion with people of, is this what we want? Do we think this is going to be effective? Is this going to be the best way to prevent this thing? Is kind of, no, we're going to decide everything in closed doors, behind closed doors. We're going to roll it out. Sure, if you, people taking issue with the rollout of it, my issue is a couple steps before that of like, man, where is the the people saying this of, or where's this, where is any of the data behind what these guys are rolling out? Like, yeah, but in a situation again, like I'm not I'm literally just playing devil. Yeah, no, yeah, I love it. That's one. perfect. That's perfect. It's like in a situation that's so rapidly changing all the time, like that community consultation takes forever. It always does. Yeah. And like in yeah. a place, in a province, in a country that's like so big and complicated with like so many diverse mm-hmm. needs, you know, if I think there would be more hate thrown towards the government if they just consulted a few special interest groups yeah. and all the special interest groups. Right. And it still would take them like two weeks to do it. Right. And And, and that's, it's not, to me, it's less of that voice, but just, because hmm. I, I see what you're saying. That's not really what I'm asking for. It's like a, like a, a community representative in, in these meetings to come with it. It's just the and fact that there's no accountability at any point and they just get to decide willy-nilly. I, we hope it's not willy-nilly. I'm sure they're doing work behind closed doors, right? Like I'm, I, I'm being a bit facetious when I say that, but like... Yeah, no, no, I know what to, you're saying. But to like the, to your point of like having community representative in the room, right? that's what they are. That's what we elected them to be. Like right. we we made right. choices and we're like, hey, these are the people that we're putting mm-hmm. forward to make our choice. But we've also allowed them to obfuscate any sort of accountability structures within anything. There's no, nobody misses a day at work. Nobody misses a paycheck, no matter how mishandled they've, which clearly, and like you say, there you have to have compassion for what a difficult job it is and clearly they're going to mishandle some things. You need to expect that. But to just to, just to say of, it doesn't matter. We're going to give you free reign to fuck this up as hard as you can. There's there's no level of fucking this up that you can get to where well, there's going to be a change, right? Like There is a level. I mean, there's going to be an election at some point. And like, that's the point of the change. But, but if you get to, but if you get to say, if you the whole time got to structure this off of the only thing we're looking at is case numbers and deaths. This is the only thing we're looking at and they get the whole narrative to, to run on this of how they're doing. They might look like they did pretty good, right? Like if you, if you say went full, this is complete bullshit and I'm, and I'm making a point here. This is, did not happen. This happened nowhere, right? Like if you went full to totalitarian, right? And just locked everyone in their house, weld them in their house, do not let them out, right? Have food rations, have, have spies, have drones going around every street. You could keep those numbers right down and on paper of how they've set the goalposts, so they would look like they did really good. Obviously, that never happened. That, but I'm just making the point of, at a certain point, when you take all that accountability away and let them set their own structures on what they're going to be judged as, even when the accountability comes, they were able to couch it in such a way that they can make it look however they want to make it look without having any real, real world accountability structures that prevent it from them having a say in how they're judged. The I think what you're getting at is like, there's no ability to remove them if we're do- they're doing a bad job during this crisis. Not even remove, not even quite. We're not even allowed to question. You're not even allowed to have a conversation about anything else. Like if you, well, if I mean, you, but I mean, you are definitely allowed to question it. It's whether or not they answer. But at some point, but too, you, you get removed from YouTube if you question. It. You get removed from all these places, like like the 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 well, 21st century public forums. Now, right? now you're getting in, I think, to a different issue than questioning like our elected officials. That's like. Like when you start talking about being removed from YouTube, like now you're talking about like questioning the science is like what the biggest like thing has been on that sort of that place. Right. But, but, but is that, but, but questioning science, that is how science operates. You have to question that is kind of how science works. And that's been very scary for me to watch as people calling an issue to questioning science. That's the only way science works. If nobody questions it, it's not science. That's not how science works. You need to question it. You need to push. And so they are forced to answer these questions. But when you put everything behind closed doors and you 
lockdown conversation around it, it doesn't get questioned. And that's where dangerous things can happen in those short little periods of time. Because things come out in the wash, but a lot of damage can be done in the if you prevent conversation in those couple months before data can catch up to... Uh, yeah, but I mean, I think that's just based on how quick, a, like, yeah, how quick of a moving situation this for sure, has been. For sure. I mean, I think there's yeah. two points. Like, one, to your point of like accountability for like elected officials. Yeah. The problem is you have to strike a balance between like an emergency and just like day to day life pre pandemic because right. we don't want to be in like an Israel situation where we have an election every six months because they can never form a government that's effective or gets right. anything done yeah. if you make it so that it's too easy for people to like remove or mm. disregard what the, the whole system says, collapses into yeah into, because into things tire spinning things take time i mean mm. four mm. years what is it in canada six years between an election yeah but like that seems like a long time but like that's how long it takes to get some major initiatives off that's how long it takes to get people like figuring out what mm. they're doing but 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 to someone coming from my perspective of how I look at it is election changes nothing, right? It doesn't matter if a different, right? right? If the left loses, the right wins, it's the same people doing the same thing and, we, and the, the issues persist, right? Just a different color on them, right? Like it, that that's my issue. If these elections doesn't, so you have, there's no accountability for this elected official and I want him out of there to put someone else in there that's going to have no accountability and doesn't, can do whatever they want. There's going to be nothing to happen until the next, right? And the next guy comes, that's my my more issues. Sure, they can get they they can get ousted, but the fact that's that's the fact that causes all those things to work because now everyone's just concentrating on winning that next election. They don't care what happened, right? Like nothing really matters except them getting reelected, which causes more issues and I think actually is more of a negative factor than anything. Which is supposed to be our one power of the people. Our our, our affect is actually the biggest thing holding us back from progress. I mean, I do think. Like, yeah, the there is definitely the, like, cynical viewpoint that elections don't change anything, right. but elections do change things. I mean, just in Canada in the last, ooh, I'm going to date myself on this, like, last seven years. So, we elected a completely new government in Alberta. Minimum wage went from $11 to $15 sure. in yeah, three that's years. Example. Or we elected a completely new government at the federal level, and we became the second country in the world to legalize marijuana. Right. And like, so, and those things wouldn't have happened if the, the political party in power didn't change. Right. And I mean, those are two, those are two very specific examples, mm -hmm. but it's like, like, don't get me wrong. I am also believe, I also like part of me believes exactly what you're saying that like the elections will never change. Like yeah. it's, it's the same government or it's the same sort of people mm -hmm. doing the same thing, but also mm -hmm. that's just the size of the organization right. that you're trying right. to run. Things mm -hmm. are too slow. Things yeah. can be way too slow moving mm -hmm. just because, I mean, there's, you know, I, I don't even know what the number is anymore. 35 million people in Canada with like a bunch of very different viewpoints. Yeah. Uh, I personally think that like municipal elections are the ones that like have the biggest impact on people's day to day life because yeah. they're just dealing with such a smaller population. Right. Right. And, and I think that's, I, I agree with that. And I think that is unfortunately becoming less true. I think if you looked at that over the last like 40, 50 years, um, the powers that are at the, at, at, that are at the smallest level, right? The municipal level have all been slowly shifting upwards where they're pushing the power upwards. And I think that's a natural dynamic that happens because certain questions come up of what are we going to do here? And they want to wash their hands of it and push it to the next level. I don't want to make the decision. I'm going to let the, the premier do it. or I'm going to let them do it. And eventually all that power that used to be at the, you know, the, the, the mayor level, the municipal, the muni municipal level have all been passed up the, up the chain to where the, you're losing power slowly over. I still think like what, you say, it's like, it's what's a good, one. what's an example of that though? Like, I think I understand kind of in theory what you're saying, but yeah. I also think that like... I listen to a whole podcast on this, so as, I should have... As, good, uh, as the world becomes more connected, there's certain things you just can't handle the municipal level because it won't make any sense. Like, imagine right. imagine if the like side of the road we drive on is handled at the municipal yeah. level. <laughs> yeah. Or like yeah. stuff like that, right? Yeah, shit would go on the side of the That's very and, true. And that's a ridiculous, yeah. like that's a ridiculous example. But but, but I see what you're saying. One thing sure. one thing I can think of is healthcare. Yeah. Um, And like, because what was it? 10, 15 years ago when they created the super board in Alberta and they took all the municipal like healthcare boards and like merged them into one. Right. I mean, it wasn't it, like, it's not that clean cut. Like mm -hmm. healthcare was never at the municipal level before it never controlled by the municipal right. government. It was always provincial, but they had like regional boards. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think that like, as a, like telecommuting became a bigger thing, uh, people were living in, 
like jurisdiction that they didn't work in and lots yeah. of people have health care through their health or their work provider so it becomes like comp- like things yeah. become complicated lines become blurry for sure like at work we're talking about uh having a remote work policy mm-hmm. and something that's like going to be a hard line in the sand is like we're going to have a remote work policy and you can you could technically like the the tools are there that you could live anywhere in the world and work for like certain positions yeah. in the company I work for. But the reality is our insurance and how we pay taxes does not allow you to live outside of Alberta. So there's going to be a hard line in the sand where it's like, I mean, you know, there's always exceptions, but case in point, like people will not be able to work from for, Mexico. Yeah. They won't be able to work outside of Alberta. They won't yeah. be able to work in other provinces because right. it gets too complicated with WCB is mm-hmm. honestly the biggest driver yeah, there. For sure. Right. And yeah, no, I see that. And and I think part of it, like, anyways, back to my question, not to put you on the spot. What is something that's like left the municipal realm of organization and gone up levels? And right. Like, like I'd say, I'd say certain taxation things. I'd say certain, uh, you know, c- certain healthcare things, right? Like, hmm, I don't know. I, I definitely had better examples of this. Actually. I know that I know the podcast. I'll re-listen to it. It was, uh, Jordan Peterson had a, uh, a congressman. I think it was a congressman. Mm-hmm. On from the states, and, and he really highlighted it and kind of gave and gave some really good examples. Like, oh, I see that too. I'm yeah. struggling in the moment, but like, that, I mean, that, but also too, my like that goes back to kind of my point of like, you know, there's a reason why I'm Canadian and not American because like in the U.S., like a like, good point. Like, I mean, I definitely don't want to get too much into like law yeah. on this, but like in the U.S., they elect their sheriffs, like they elect their police force, and they elect their like their judges like mm-hmm. well not judges uh i think the, they do the, like their the, judges uh, but they also like their prosecutors prosecutor that's what i was yeah and it's yeah. like at some point it's like is that especially with the way like politics works mm-hmm. nowadays is mm-hmm. that too far like yeah. too many things are being elected mm-hmm. and that like like people especially in like smaller communities and stuff like that like people start worrying too much about the politics and instead doing a good job because you know what like what there's a what's that quote i say it a little too often at work but like a person is smart people are stupid yeah yeah. and sometimes like you do not need everyone's opinion on like how the law works as long as you're enforcing it right right yeah and that's and and, and that's just i'm gonna say by law i mean courts because like i don't want to get into policing at all for sure that's a whole that's a whole yeah right And, and and i think that's where like i'm uh i'm of the of the I'm just of the, of the uh, I'm of the opinion that if we're going to go like this, and 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 I think there's a really good argument to be made, and I think you did a really good job of highlighting this that this situation requires some special things, right? Like we maybe do not have the time, we do not have the the latitude, the 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 space to make these decisions like they were. But if that's the case, you need to double down on accountability, on answering questions, on on addressing hesitancy, on doing this instead of shutting it down, demonizing people for for not jumping on board with this and, and, and not so I'm like the biggest thing to me is like people that have hesitancy, the biggest thing to me would be, wouldn't you want to address that specifically and 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 talk to people why why are you hesitant and wouldn't you want to address it? Wouldn't that be clear beacons of light that, Hey, we need to go here and we need to address these concerns. But instead what it gets taken to is we revert to name calling and not we, it, it seems like what, what is, what is taking place is there's certain expectations there's certain big tech things like the YouTube thing where you just get pulled all together. There's certain things where you just get demonized. If you have any sort of point of view, there's actual people like there's, there's doctors that are coming out that are putting their, their livelihoods at risk. They're saying, we don't agree with some of the stuff, but, and it's not to say that we think we're right either, but all we were saying is that we want to have a conversation about it to see how these concerns stack up, but what's being shut down is they say, no, we're not, this is not a time for discussion. This is a time for people following, falling in line. And I just think historically that is such a dangerous precedent, right? Like probably nothing's going to come of it. There's probably nothing bad, but like I've read too much history to just look at that and not at least have a, a, a pit in my stomach that goes, Ooh, something's not right there. Right? Like that, that's my biggest thing is just, I wish there was more open conversation about it. I wish I could ask some of the things that I have concerns about of, of, of some of these little things that you hope that these are being addressed in the, these back rooms where these decisions are being made enough crying dog. You're fine. Uh, you know, like I, I just, uh, I wish there was more. I just wish there was more. I wish there was more leadership. I wish people would just come up and instead of just talking bad about people, name calling, let's try and pull people together. Let's, let's, let's give a message of hope. Let's try. It seems like the, the, the playbook is just to get everyone so scared that they follow what we do instead of 
let's get people hopeful for something else that this is that we're on the right track and these are the best decision. But it seems like so much of this is be is being um addressed from the negative realm, right? Like I feel like so many of these things can be said and you could take the same policy or the same question and address it from two different sides, from a positive side, right? The carrot carrot and the stick side. It seems like so much we're going to the stick right now. Whereas yeah, but the carrot because they tried a little bit. They tried the carrot months ago and it didn't work. But until so they tried the carrot, a bunch of people got on, a bunch of people had concerns. It went right to the stick. Instead of saying, hey, like this is what we let's address your concerns. They said, no, you're an idiot. You're you're a, you're an anti vaxxer all these things. And they just labeled these people with it, which to be fair, it might be pretty on the money for some people that are have some crazy concerns. Or have, but then there's people like me that have never watched the QAnon, that have never watched anything that don't have any of that magnet shit in their head, have 100% factual, credible concerns that we'd like address, that we'd love a Dr. Dina Hinshaw or someone to come out and address and just say, you know, like I could come up with a list of probably like 15 things. If they would address, cons- I would be so on board with this if they would just come out. But for whatever reason, they won't. And I think that the answer, the reason they won't is because the answers, people will not like the answers of why they No, I think the reason they won't is because the answers are so complicated that they will just lose people and they'll just open themselves up to more of that example that I gave of like the 98% of -hmm. things being open. Mm -hmm. If people can't look into that for 15 seconds and then publish bullshit articles to get put on the internet, how are you, how are you going to like sit people down and have like a whole like figure like go over i don't know like a hundred years of yeah empanology is that i don't know i I know you're saying yeah yeah study of diseases epidemiology epidemiology yeah Yeah. well it's like i remember i can't remember the player but i was watching the nba press day like a few months back a few weeks back i don't know time is time is all time is fluid right now i hear you yeah and there's the guys up there sitting down being like oh well like and they get asked are they vaccinated and they're like you know what i just haven't had time to do my research yet and i'm like what do you mean you haven't had time to do your research you've had 18 months plus you have enough money that you could have just paid a team of doctors to sit you down for and give you like 12 doctors give you a two-week crash course on this right you chose not to like so even when people have the means to do this they're yeah. also just not doing it but also the, i i would say but that's what it would take. But like, sure. honestly, but, but, that, but honestly, I bet you a bunch of those people did do that, did look into it, ha- came to a place where they didn't, they had some concerns like I did, but they can't say that. If you say, I, no, I, I did my research. No, but if, but just for an example, if that, that, that basketball there said, I did my research and I don't agree with it, what would have happened to him? The, probably the same thing that would have happened to him when he said, oh, I haven't had time to do my research. I don't think so. I, I do think so. I think that the people are just hiding behind it. But but I think people are also hiding their true feelings because they're hiding from the backlash and from the negative effect, from exactly what that is. And now, But that's my thing is now, as soon as you get to a place where people are, are afraid to say what they truthfully feel, there's something wrong there. Right? I, I, don't, I don't know. You I, don't think so? I, I think that once you get to that place, I think that people are just lazy and they're not doing and they're just like they don't want to deal with it. For sure. And, and 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 I do see that too, right? And that's where I would differentiate myself from that because I never was at that point where I just I don't want to deal with it. I've said exactly what my concerns are the whole time and I've put complete episodes out of hey, like I am on this. I'm not saying this is all bad. I'm not saying there's some evil cabal here, but there's certain things I would love to have addressed and they'd make me feel a lot better. And I think it's a good culmination of the better arguments from those people that are on that side that maybe have some really wackadoodle ideas on it, but some of them aren't that crazy. Some of them might hold some water and I would love to see those addressed. Sure. We don't need to address the magnets. We don't need to address mind control and Bill Gates shit. Right. But like certain things, okay, of like the financial factors of it, like would love to see some of those addressed. Right. Like would love to see some of the 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 demonization of the, of the conversations around adverse effects. I would love to see that address of like, hey, well, why can't we have a, that seems like a pretty good conversation for us to have, right? If there's actual data for us to look at. Then. Because I think to that point, like if we had spent all this time to do this, way more people would have died. If like, if the rollout of the vaccine was way slower and yeah. you know what, what are we up to at Alberta? Like 70, we're in like low seventies of like fully vaccinated people now. I think eight. I think high. I thought we were in the eighties. Oh, I to be honest, I, I thought it was something like eighty seven. I think I, th- I thought I saw eighty seven at one point, but now we're starting to get to the point where it's going to start being like the Israel side, where <coughs> after six months, even if you're double vaccinated, after six months, yeah. you now we come. So now the numbers are going to fluctuate, and I think we're at we're at the we're on now the we're last at people where people of, need to get their their like constant boosters for right. you know however probably until the rest of their lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now what I like to do in those situations of like, that's what I would like to know of. Like, I think that's what a lot of people would like to know is like, if we magically waved our wand and 
tomorrow, 100% of people were vaccinated in Alberta, 100%. Wouldn't anything change? And where I go to is, okay, look at Israel, right? One of the, they were vaccinated way ahead of everybody, got way ahead. Of, and it's a good just test case to look at. We're clearly very different populations, very different dynamics, very different, you know, rural to urban. Like so many things are different there. But just to look at the the, the base effects of what is a, uh, a very, ex- an extremely high percentage of a population vaccinated, what does that look like? And what you're seeing, right? And what you're seeing is, yeah, it, uh, it works, you know, the, the, the vaccine works pretty good in some people. There's still a lot of factors that go into it, right? You, your, your health really still affects it. Vaccine or not, all those underlying health effects still carry a lot of water, right? Like that, that still is a big impact, right? We're seeing breakthrough cases more and more each day, right? Like, and all those studies, like, but here's the other thing. And that's what I wanted to bring up of, uh, I agree with you that it, how do you, how do you move forward when someone can take something like that stat of like the 98% of hospital beds are open and look at it. But now it's easy to see those from your point of view of the people on the other side, seeing those, those bullshit ones. But I think there's just as bullshit, like, a the, that same version, but the left wing of like, um, like, like the like the thing in the states where they're saying oh, hospitals are overrun with with ivermectin overdoses, which turn out completely bullshit. There's zero examples of it. It never happened anywhere in the states, but that blew up and was a huge thing on the news. And it's the same thing of where that argument you just made about well, how do you do it when when you can see this? How do you blame those other people on the other side when they can take that same example and say, look at the left and look at what they're doing on that side, right? And I'm somewhere in the middle. And I'm seeing both, and I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're all saying playing the same game. They're all playing bullshit, right? There, there's there's somewhere in the middle here. So, but anyways, not, sorry, that was a lot of things no, to throw no. at you at once. There. My point with what's our current vaccination level is we got to a point and like, honestly, like there have, were no major, there definitely were side effects, but mm-hmm. like the side, the amount of side effects in the province when we got to the 70 or 80%, mm-hmm. wherever we were, right, was no higher than any, any other major like public health emergency once we got to that vaccination point but to your point of this stuff starts to wear off like and now we need third doses now Uh we need fourth doses and i mean how long have they been giving out a yearly flu shot like this is not something that's unrealistic Mm -hmm. for us to be doing for the rest of time right because but if we had taken all this time to explain and answer everyone's concerns, then more people would die, right? And then more people would die, and more people would have taken longer to get to that like critical mass. And we never really got to the critical mass. But places did, and, places it, didn't help, did. and it didn't do anything. Well, it didn't do nothing. I mean, people in New Zealand had a lot better time than people in Alberta. People in New Zealand live on an island. They never even let COVID get in there. Yeah, well. So they, 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 I think you take vaccines that were almost enough, vaccine or no vaccine, the New Zealand would be an exact same case because they didn't let it in, right? Like we're somewhere like Israel where the, they, they actually have it coming in and you see this. Uh, oh, my mic. Uh, where, do you, where do you see... Their their the their worst wave they had was after they hit that that ninety percent vaccination. Their their wave of while fully, not fully, but like for for the sake of argument, a fully vaccinated society had the worst wave after that, right? And I think part of that too, though, is that is that by not addressing what this is and by promising people, because in, in an effort to. to to your point of we need to get this out as fast as possible and effective to, to help save people in that effort of not being upfront about the upsides and the downsides of being realistic about what kind of protection you're getting. I think they let people out into the world, not understand it. Cause I think there's a month, there's probably a four, three to three to five month period where people that were getting their second shot thought they were, thought this was a, they were immune. They thought they would not catch us. They didn't realize they could still catch it and spread it. And I think that was a very big detriment. And I think in, in a, in an effort, coming from a good place of trying to let's get this out. Let's stand the way, anything that's going to stand the way of the speed that we can get this out. That's one of those things. But I think there's so many places you could point to where there's a lot of ill effects that came with that too, right? It's a double-edged sword when you're trying to rush it out. Right. So, I mean, listen, I don't know anything about (laughs) Israel and their vaccine and how, and how vaccination, how even COVID affected the place. Like honestly, living in Canada, unless you actually went out and searched for it, you didn't hear, and you bear. I didn't even hear things about Northwest Territories. All you, I heard about was Alberta and the U.S. I have a real issue with that, though, oh, Brandon. Oh yeah, because, okay, that's a whole nother point. Yeah, like, yeah, let's put a put in that because yeah, 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 I have yeah, one yeah, other yeah, point on yeah, Israel. For sure, for sure. Um, I mean, I'm sure they are considered a first world country, but they definitely have a lot of like second and third world issues in their country. There's a lot else right. going on there. For sure. Like for they've sure. been in a war yeah. forever. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that has to affect the rural population. <laughs> oh, I got to sure. believe that like their cities and like their 
their you know their major urban centers are comparable to never been there no idea uh i gotta believe they're comparable based on what i hear to right. canada and the u.s but i think that probably they have a major rural population issue and they have major issues along their borders so like i can't for really foresee it being a, com- a proper a exa- comparison right between of like north america for sure western european type yeah. countries yeah um yeah, and I, I yeah. don't I don't know enough to I think that's a fair argument because I don't I'll be full first one to admit I don't know any of those factors either to say how how nicely it matches up. But in so much as it's not a perfect example, but it's one of those ones you can use. And I think Israel's just an easy one to pick on because they have such a small population compared to some of these countries we're talking about and how much earlier they got the vaccines than every other country and how yeah, but they also have a very a much more dense population too. For sure, so, yeah, and that, and that also, has a big effect. Yeah, and that has a huge effect. I mean, right. that's like that's the problems you saw in Italy right off the bat. Which, but that's the thing of of this of this Italy. When you look at that, and you actually look into it, Brendan, it was very it was one very small part of Italy with the high with the with the 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 oldest people. And when you look at the entire country, it wasn't. Well, how was because that was one of those things that really made me mad because I was all in. I was telling people, "Holy shit, you got to look at it. Look what's happening right now." And I got everyone all scared up. But then a couple months later, I went back and looked into it, and it was not at all what they said. It was not at all what they said. It was like, you know, like eighty percent of the country was n- not good. Like none, nowhere was good. I don't want to yeah. pretend that this isn't happening, but what it was built up to was. And again, I can see the argument that they're trying to, it was done with good intentions because they're trying to get people to take this seriously and that, but I know what you're going to you say, really burn some bridges, like, but also like, like look at SARS in 2002 in yeah. Canada, where did it affect Toronto? Yeah. But like, you know what? The world history will always say like SARS really hit Canada pretty hard yeah. and when it really only affected like our biggest yeah, major right. population mm-hmm. center mm-hmm. Yeah, and like Again, kind of talking out my ass on this one because yeah. like I don't have I have not seen an update on Italy since the took off in the right. rest of the world. Right. And this is probably like getting back to the yeah. other point that we were just put yeah. a pin in. Uh but yeah. And, and 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 that's and to to jump to that point that we put a pin in there is that's another big concern I've had about places like the Carolinas, Florida, Texas, um, Israel, um, lots of the Netherlands countries. There were so many Play things around the world that were doing slightly different experiments, words, slightly different experiments than what was happening in Canada. Canada, pretty much, there were slight differences province to province, but on the whole, our reaction was pretty much very similar, right? Whether you're in Alberta, BC, there's going to be small differences, different depending on the time of year where it is. But when you look at somewhere like I think Texas, it really depends on who you talk to and but. who you talk to for sure, right? But like when you look at something like. If you compare Florida to any province or territory in Canada, it's going to be vastly different, right? If you compare some of the some of the the tax that some of the the the, the Nordic countries in, in in Northern Europe did, right? Norway, Sweden, those kind of guys. There is these tests going on that we could compare to see, okay, how's it going, right? Like this is one way we do it with Canada fighting this with lockdowns and really harsh draconian measures. That's one way to go about it. But there's also these other places that are trying something different where they're opening up, protecting the vulnerable, and you're seeing what's happening. And now, I mean, but, but we stopped seeing any news from those places that were trying anything different I and mean, completely. And there's, but when you listen to podcasts, you listen to something, oh yeah, we lived in, or when I went down to Phoenix for uh, Christmas day and life is going on as usual and we're all locked down and terrified and, and life is going like nothing's happening. And, not, and and that that's tough to me is like, why would you not address it? Even if you still believe that we're still doing the right thing, which I, I could definitely make an argument for even myself that I still believe in what we're doing. You still need to address, okay, if you believe in this, given these other things that why, why are you just trying to stop anybody from looking over there to see what they're doing why aren't you comparing it to show why you still believe that what you're doing is right and why they're wrong i don't so I, and again i don't know why i'm asking you this question yeah. you're not a fucking covid player right like i don't i don't yeah. think that anyone was stopping anyone from doing the comparisons to to europe right or like nordic countries right because a i think these are like the two very different like comparisons when you're doing a comparison to like texas for anywhere sure. in the for u.s sure. and like anywhere in europe for sure like a yeah. With a Nordic country, Nordic Nordic country, I, yeah, I know yeah. What I mean. yeah, you get the demographics of people so are different. way more similar. So, like people are more similar, and they have more common like values than we do. Like Canada, like is a melting pot. No, I don't. I don't know if Canada. I wouldn't describe Canada as a melting pot. I would describe like that was always the term they used in social studies yeah, for the yeah, U.S. Yeah, yeah, Canada. One of the issues with like 
nationalism, for instance, in Canada or like the federal government is that like people have such different values between Quebec and right. Alberta. Yeah, for sure. Like they just do. And they're, those have always existed and they're always going to exist. Mm-hmm. When you start getting into, especially the European countries, those countries are much more like people ha- are more closely aligned in their values. Right. And so I think that like, it's just going to be a different situation yeah, over there. No matter sure. no matter the topic you're talking about, mm-hmm. whether you're talking about COVID, whether you're talking about healthcare, where you're talking about childcare, like whatever you want. Right. Um, and so I, it's very hard to compare those. And also, I mean, like even outside of COVID, when was the last time you saw a report on what Sweden's doing? Right. On yeah. anything. Yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's true. And, 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 but like, so yeah, going into the U.S. though, like the U.S. is... Uh, I hear what you're saying about like Phoenix, like people uh-huh. like uh, Phoenix being like wide open or whatever, mm-hmm. because I know other people that have had similar experiences yeah. down there, but also like th- their death rates were way higher. And yeah. there is such a big divide between like the rich and the poor down there. And yeah. like, I mean, bluntly, uh, when you go down to Phoenix, you see what the rich yeah. people see. Yeah, exactly. Like you don't see what the ultra rich people sure. see, but you're definitely seeing what upper mm-hmm. middle class see. And upper middle class is a lot smaller in the US For than sure. it is in Canada. I think yeah. a lot of people in Canada consider themselves upper middle class. And they probably are, but like that is a much bigger demographic than yeah. it is in the US. There's yeah, so right. many people down there living below the poverty line and those stories you never see either. Yeah. And and they're the ones most disproportionately affected by all this. Absolutely, because right? they can't yeah. afford the healthcare or the treatment that you get for the vaccine, or they don't yeah. have access to. Yeah. Like, I don't think. Yeah, you can go down. I oh, like you went, during flu season when you go down to the U.S. You go to Costco and it's like twenty ninety nine to get a flu shot. Yeah. And it's, in Canada, it's not even something you think of. You can yeah. walk in, go at the Oiler game, you get a flu shot. Yeah, and on for the free. Yeah. And it's just like yeah. they're just there, and it's everywhere. And I mean, mm-hmm. I don't know if this is actually true, but I'm pretty sure any time of the year you can just like walk into a pharmacy, get a flu shot, and so. like call yeah. it a day. Yeah, and, and that's it. Yeah, there might be certain times of the year where you have to, where they might not have them on hand. You might have to book it. But yeah. I think for the most part, yeah, you can get one whenever you want. Yeah, really. And so it's like, you don't like, it's small things like that, that you really don't notice the difference. There might, there's probably whole communities Mm -hmm. because also the thing in Phoenix is like, have you ever tried to take a bus in Phoenix? (laughs) No, (laughs) nearly impossible. (laughs) Like you can't do it. There's no public transportation, whatever. So if you don't have a car and there isn't a pharmacy in your neighborhood that's given out vaccines, Mm -hmm. are you going to walk two hours to get a vaccine? Right. But like at that point, you probably like you're not. That's not what you're thinking about. Yeah, yeah. But you, you're in survival mode at that point, right? Like you yeah. look at that with so many of these things, and that's a good argument for. But I think there's a lot of people down there that we might call it survival mode, but for them, it's just living their that's lives, life, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just it's you're you, you don't realize how lucky you are when you're what you're like that first world problems thing is kind of a funny cliche thing to say, but like when you really think about that, that is a real reality that we live in of our problems are much different than other people's. Right. And I agree, I agree with that. And and what you're saying about, you know, trying to draw the comparisons and, and I wasn't trying to say like, we should be comparing, you know, Kentucky with, with Norway, right. Cause they're going to be so different. But what I, what I was trying to lay to is that it seems like Canada is trying to pretend not, and this is tough. Cause I don't want to say that they're actively trying to pretend this, but I think there's money in not right. Like pretend all, what? so now, if you're a news station, right, in Canada, and you can either highlight all these other countries that are trying something different, right, like that Texas is wide open, that the numbers are comparable with uh, California, which has probably some of the harshest measures in all, in all of America, and their numbers are roughly set, like their death numbers, about the same, right? Uh, sure. And, but and, I mean, also, like, their uh, huge population density, density is way different for sure for sure right and, and, and but, but that's but like getting into it like that's one of the small details yeah. that if you don't look into it or right. you're not educated at the level mm-hmm. to realize that oh the death rate in in california is the same as it is in texas but it's like yeah but in tech like texas has the biggest by land mass cities in the world yeah and it's like it's uh like the so those things make a huge so difference. California, on it. Yeah, California's got some huge too. And yeah, right, but and, that's, and everyone and and same. But I can make the same argument that you're making, right? Like, against kind of my own point of everyone's looking at Florida's death numbers. They're saying they're so high, but when you look at Florida's death numbers adjusted to the because what does Florida have more than anywhere else in the world? Old people, old people, old people, right? So when you age adjust their numbers, it's actually a much different picture, right? Because you have to look at it's unfair to compare apples to apples if they have a you know a twenty year average to higher uh, age range in in that in that state. What I was trying to say is that there's so many of these different experiments going on, right? But 
the fact that they're the fact that they exist calls into question or at least begs discussion on what we're doing. And because and it seems like because they don't want to do that. And For because sure. I don't I don't think I know where you're going with this. I don't think Canadian news organizations don't want to do that. Right. I think they literally don't have the capacity to. Because what is in uh, and I could be I'm not I know I'm not totally off base on this, but yeah. it's like in Alberta I remember reading years ago that like when they would give a press conference or whatever at the ledge, there'd be like 15, 20 newspapers there yeah. right? because everyone's covering it. Mm-hmm. But now there's only like two because everything is either, uh, I think it's the Nash or national, like who owns the post and the, the yeah, one owns one, one owns the other, but the, yeah, the thing there's is, the sun and then there's the everyone else, like the journal and it's yeah. the Calgary Herald. They're yeah. owned by the same people. Mm-hmm. And I want to say it's the national post Yeah, or, the, or whatever. Yeah. I think it's the sun and the post. Anyway, there, there's two sides that are all owned by the same people. And, but also like, it's not like they have these huge social media followings. You're not seeing posts on like CBC does an okay job on social media. And every once in a while, someone will post an article mm-hmm. on social media about CBC or on like Reddit or something like that but you're not like you don't see i i personally like i mean i don't call on facebook very often but like i'm not seeing edmonton journal no ever yeah and like you know what even during covid i wasn't going to edmontonjournal.ca or whatever it is to get updates because like canadian media has done a terrible job of reaching out to at least like my demographic or like me and younger. Yeah. Like, I don't even know. I willing to bet that like people coming into like 18 year olds probably can't even name the fact that like the Edmonton journal, yeah. which would be like yeah. our, the yeah. city's paper. Yeah. And they probably don't see it because like people don't get it to their house anymore. And, 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 and this is, this is a symptom. I'm not sure if it's a symptom or if it's cause, but it's all connected of like, what I'm saying is I, I agree that I don't think these news are, 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 are intentionally hiding things. I, I just look at it from a point of what do they want to do? They want to make money. They want mass clicks. What have they found that the only reason they're getting clicks right now is fear. So they're finding that what is going to scare people the most that, well, le- that lets off, that lets off the, the, the gas pedal of the fear. If they highlight that people are even trying different, different things that countries aren't all doing that, that everyone isn't locked down and scared like we are that highlights it. So the fact that they can just keep concentrating on, let's just highlight death numbers, case numbers, whatever the most scary things we can highlight. I'd say that I would be, I would probably push back pretty hard if you wanted to fight that they weren't leaning into the fear to 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 sell to sell magazines. I mean, I, mean, that's I think poor, there poor might choice. be some of that, but again, I like yeah. kind of I personally you bring see that more back a, to that's an American problem. I mean, I always remember, yeah, years ago there was the not years ago. I think a few right years ago it is more American. Though. There was a there was that shooting down at uh in Ottawa at the mm-hmm. like. I want to say the like tomb of the unknown soldier. Remember that guy? And then he broke into parliament yeah, and yeah, there was yeah, that yeah. whole now, thing. Yeah. I remember that now that you mentioned it. And, and, and like a few days later after everything was said and done, mm-hmm. the big thing on social media was people were comparing Canadian news coverage to the incident to American news coverage of like similar incidents. Yeah. And Canadian news coverage was all here are the facts. Here's what we know. Yeah. And that was it. And they left it at that. And they did that for like 12 hours. And I think it was like, Peter Mansbridge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just everyone was giving him lots of credit for not like, but you get into the U S where it's all about clicks. So they bring all these experts and all, and then they have all these like people giving their opinions and then they interview every single person who's like, can be considered a local politician ever. And in Canada, they didn't do any of that. It's like, no, this is what we know. Like, Mm -hmm. this is what's going on. Here's our latest updates. Mm -hmm. We'll let you know when we know more. And now I don't know, I can't speak exactly how it was to COVID, but I do think there is like a fundamental difference in how like journalism works in Canada versus how journalism works in the US. For sure. And and I'm I'm actually really glad you highlighted that because I think I'm making my point in a poor way because I think that is definitely true and that this is way more of an American issue. A lot of these things that I'm arguing is coming from the States, but I would argue that the Canadian media doesn't matter. Oh yeah, because I've, because I think everything policy wise is all just measuring off of what is what is the what is uh, what is the 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 current um, mo that we're operating with in the blue states in the in the U.S. That is what Canada does the whole time from the, from the pandemic. You can see at the very start whatever the most left leaning things in the state was to do. That's what Canada did, and that's what they imp- implemented federally, right? Like at the when when like lockdowns, masking, all that stuff was. Very much, and 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 that's because of the control that the American left wing media has, and 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 the the the. 
I mean, but that I could also say that's just like a fact that Canada is more socialist. It is for sure than the U.S. Like, than uh-huh. the U.S. is, so, and so like obviously we're gonna our policies are gonna line up with blue states more for because sure. that's just the way we mm-hmm. are. Like even mm-hmm. I think when you look at the like the quadrant thing of like what is it like conservatism, liberalism, um, and totalitarianism, then, and libertarianism. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Like even the most. I mean. It, this is 10, 15 years ago when I was like taking grade 12 yeah. social studies. But at the time, even the most conservative Canadian governments were still more left than the Democrats in the U.S. Yeah. yeah and sure. I don't know. I don't think it's like that anymore. I think like Canada has pushed more to the right. Yeah, maybe a little bit. But even, yeah, I think it's so hard for us to even see because I agree with that. But I think if you ask anybody from outside of Canada, because I feel like when you're within it, you don't see it. I think people would have that. I think if you ask somebody in the States about that, they would still see it very much of like our, even our conservatives are, are pretty left in, from, from their point of view, right? Like I think we are so embaked. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's what makes Canada special is that we have that little bit of a, you know, the, the, the base operating thing of, of freedom that kind of animates the whole U S for Canada, it's kind of love. And that sounds real cheesy and stuff. It's, you know, but, but you know what I mean? Like we're, we're kind, like that's kind of what we have. So I like that. And I think that's what kind of keeps us on the left side of that spectrum. Well, I honestly, I would describe it more as like Canadians truly buy into this attitude of like, if things that you do that like really don't affect me, like Canadians are fine with, right? Like, and I mean this heavy topic, but like my example would be abortion. There is no world in which someone else that I yeah. am not related yeah. to having an abortion affects me. Exactly. It really doesn't. Yeah. And like, and so Canadians are like, you don't hear the abortion argument in yeah. Canada. Yeah, it's- I mean, there definitely is issues with access to the service, but, um, Every once in a while, somebody goes on campus with some wild ass signs and, and, and has a... Yeah, but you know what? Even that. and Yeah, I know. That was like a thing when we were in our undergrad. That <laughs> Remember like, Jordan Labonte going out <laughs> with his sign? Yeah. Oh, my God. The pro, pro life versus pro yeah. choice thing. But but, uh, but he went out with that sign because it was right when that dress, like the blue dress. And he's like, uh, yeah. he went out with a sign with like the dress on. He's like, the blue, the dress is blue. Everyone was standing out with all these crazy uh, pro life. Oh, it's hilarious. The but and it, awesome. I mean, even that I think was a bit much. And I think we were seeing some of like um, the american media backlash on campus for that because like at the end of the day the pro life group was never going to make any political headway yeah there's no inroads made on that yeah Yeah, but honestly all i think they did was i think the like pro strength of the other side yeah yeah, the pro choice well no i think the pro choice people on campus really like screwed it up by like making such a big deal about it if people would just put up these billboards in the middle of quad and like you know what i get that like there's definitely people have been through this and it's a traumatic experience and all that but if they had put these billboards up in in the middle quad and just left it and like no one had really said anything there might have been like some things about it but the fact that they made it such a big barbara streisand effect yeah yeah and now everyone's looking at it Mm. and it's like and you know what there might be have there might have been people who just like actually did want more information and see what the pro life, life. argument was yeah, yeah i always yeah. gotta like stop and know, think to I make know. sure me i'm too. using the right word me too yeah yeah that's funny. um and you know what honestly the pro-choice group was like cutting off that access so yeah. when you're talking about access to information yeah. it's like oh well now i can't like actually read this poster and see what's up without like being yelled at about this right. and it's just like you know i'm you're never going to change my mind like personally i'm yeah. like you're never going to change my mind on this issue that it doesn't fucking affect me so i don't give a shit yeah but you are pissed me off that i can't like read what the other group has to say for sure and and, and i feel like that kind of sums up my issue like so much of my issues with all this covid stuff it's not so much less is it about the actual policies that come up with or the things that come up. It's, it's, it's that it's the prevent the prevention of the conversation around it that, that, that I'm really frustrated with. And I think there's a lot of arguments that come from a really good place that are on that side of like, Hey, we can't have any hesitance that we need everyone. We need everyone to buy in like, this is what we can't afford this right now. We can't afford that. But I just think there's yeah, no but, time in history that we can't afford a conversation and discussion, right? Like, I think that's uh, the one thing we can't give up. Oh, I do think though, that during COVID there was a time when we did not have time for this conversation. I, like when I we were doing the first month. Well, no, when we were deep in that, like, I can't remember if it was the second or the third wave. And when like cases were skyrocketing, it was like, no, we do not have time for this conversation. Mm-hmm. And like, maybe, and, and the problem is the there 
there's a lot of like points that you brought up that like, yeah, these are actual issues. Mm -hmm. The thing is by having that conversation about like, I'm going to say the like more middle issues for Mm -hmm. lack of a better word, just empowers the people who are way out the fucking left field on this, on this problem Mm -hmm. and just pushes more people from like, Okay, so there's a bunch of people like yourself who have, like, critically thought this through, Mm -hmm. and they have, like, questions about, like, the money behind it. Yeah. Great. But there's people who aren't thinking about that who... And and, and some safety concerns, too, to be be honest with you, right? And and Yeah, no, I'm pulling one one little thing from what you're saying. I see. But people who are willing to do that, and all you're doing is the people who aren't, for lack of a better word, like, don't have the, like... I don't even mental capacity. Don't have the mental capacity for, mm-hmm. for, for like handling those like more in depth topics. For All sure. you're doing is, is, is murking the waters for them and they're not going to do the research and then they're just like, yeah. going to be like, nah, I'm out. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah. And I think I, th- I see what you're saying about, you know, that, that, that buoys, those people that are, that kind of have some crazy ideas and it pushes them further if you give it the time of day, right? And you're worried about that. But I also would make a counter argument on that of when you shut, when, when, when you shut down the conversation about it and you don't address these things, that also digs those people that are already on, they, they use that as, oh, well, look, look at that example, right? And that's what I see so much of. And this is, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Brian, because this is something that I see of my reasoning for what my concerns are is so different than what the media is portraying the average person that has hesitancy from and probably, yeah, the but, average person that I know of what their concerns are, right? It's so different. And and I agree. And and when I look at the reasoning that I have, if I tried to explain that to like, just say my hillbilly friend from Slave Lake that is so on the other side and believes them, if I tried, like you say, I don't think they would have the mental capacity to handle the th- type of things I'm trying to say to them. But when they, I think there's a lot of people that may not have the mental horsepower, whatever you want to call it, to articulate why they feel like something isn't right here. But I think there's a lot more actual things that they do have some justification on that they are not articulate enough to argue for, but they're getting demonized when they have something actual to say. Like, that's where I feel like I'm standing up for people that are, sure. they're, they're, they're trying to say what I'm saying, like my concerns, but they just don't know how to get there. So what their version of it is like, oh, there's magnets. And I'm like, no, you don't actually mean magnets. You're, you're saying that there's some fuckery going on here. And I, and I, I can see that and I can run with mm, it. Right? See, I don't think that. I think there are, le- there are legitimately people and like, prime example my parents live across in phoenix they live across the street from someone that like truly believes there's microchips in the vaccine for sure right and yeah. and, the, and it's like no you're wrong like and yeah. there's there's no argument about it and you know what at the end of the day honestly you know like people need to people talk to their doctors but like 99 percent of the population needs to get the vaccine and like that's the reality of it i think so yeah I, I, or should or is eligible for the vaccine and they should just do the right thing to make sure everyone stays safe there are definitely people, there are medical exemptions, and there are people in situations where they can't get it. Yeah. And 99 might be a little high, but it's definitely but higher it than what, I think if you get 100, I don't think it changes anything. I think you see that with Israel. They had like 99%, and it didn't make a difference because people still catch it and still transmit. Yeah, but you're still talking. hospital's in a better state, right? You're still you, talking about somewhere that's like, again, back to my Israel point, it's so small. Okay, We're not, so you get America to 100%. You get 330 million people vaccinated tomorrow. Just magical i don't think that changes i, I think do still think so. i think that would make a huge difference especially would, the amount americans travel around the world yeah but but it's still spreading it's still happening there's breakthrough cases more and more every day the the, the vaccines are getting less because there's more time like we talked about already that yeah. the waning waning effectability but also just how viruses work mean you both know adaptability mm-hmm. and how they every day that passes the more people that have it the less protection there is for the people that do have it right yeah but this is this is to the point of the vaccine isn't a cure the vaccine it, it, is saving you from dying. If you have the vaccine, you might get it and you might still end up but, in the hospital, but your chances of death are way lower. Right. Right. And, and, and I agree with that, but I think that needs to be, that is a different reality than saying that this is actually stopping the disease, that this is getting a handle on it, right? If it's still spreading and it's still, I'd say, like yeah. this is this, I think it's the only argument I see for the vaccine is that it helps. It helps what, what build, you just said. It helps build up immunity. And at some point, like the human, humans will adapt to 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 their being like covid in the world or covid 19 i guess and but we don't know that well we did it for the plague but that's the thing but this is what's changed and, and, and the problem was it took 200 years and killed a shit ton of people for sure right and 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 this there's a possibility that we could have stopped that but we don't know we have never 
actively vaccinated into a pandemic before. That has never been done in their lifetimes. So there's been vaccines that have come out later on once a, we've kind of already gone through that, but we've never done it actively into it. And there's some really good research. There's a well, yeah, in, in our lifetimes, we haven't, but in 20, in the Spanish flu, they did. That's how they got through that in 2018 or 1918 <laughs> there you go, yeah, was yeah, yeah. Uh, they were, they did vaccinations and yeah. they figured it out and they got yeah. through it. But also like a shit ton of people died. Right. For sure. Right. And, and, I'm just saying there's the, I, I feel like we're not giving the time of day to the uncertainty that's there. We're speaking from two concrete of terms for something we really don't know the outcome of. There's a lot of strong pointers. There's a lot of really good data coming up that we are on the right, that this is going positively. But I think that was very dangerous to just say, we are so confident that this is what's going to happen. We really had no idea. And now we're still pretending that we have this idea of, we know what's going to happen. We have no idea what's going to happen. Mm, I'm pretty sure we knew that a bunch of people, a bunch more people were going to die if we didn't introduce a vaccine. We knew that 17 For months sure. ago. But but there was also a chance that we roll this vaccine. Something with rolling out the vaccine changes how it how it adapts because it's adapting around a vaccine. This is just a and I'm not saying there's a high likelihood of it. If there was, they probably wouldn't have done it. But I'm saying there's a non zero chance, right? Yeah. It might be very minoscopic that that somehow makes this worse. It right, that there was a chance of that, but that was never addressed, right? They never said like there's a ninety nine point nine 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 whatever chance that this is all the positive things that we both hope. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I want this too. I want this to yeah, be Yeah, but that that's again gets back to my point of because we elected these people to make that decision. To make for that us. decision, yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's putting out to the world that, oh, you know what? Because at the end of the day, it was a test and it was it was Still a is. big experiment. Still yeah. Is. And giving everyone the vaccine, it's like, yeah, we mm-hmm. These things aren't fully, but I mean, vaccines are never fully proven and they're exactly, never. Right. But, but I wish there was more, I, I, I wish instead but there, of there's, the response was they're 100% safe and effective. There's no risk. That's what turns me off. It's like, why are you telling people that? Why not be honest? There, there's very low risk, right? There's, I, there's some risk. But- I would challenge you on that doctor said that they're 100% safe and effective and they didn't say that they are safe and effective because that is a big difference. Yeah, I I think I can try and find the commercial. There's one commercial that always played during the hockey games. That's what kept the one that just drives me nuts is they kept saying it was like a, it was like a telecommunication, like like doctor talking to someone at home, right? They're saying, and they're like, oh, but I don't know if the vaccine is. It is 100% safe. There's no concerns. It's not, and, and and it's just one of those. I don't know if it's an Alberta thing or if it's a federal one, but but just things like that in the. I'd be, I like, you definitely could be right. And like, after this, I'd love you to send it to yeah, me. Yeah, for if sure. It, and I, I want to look up to If I'm they not actually sure if right. say yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's 100% safe. But the other thing too is like, I've, I heard the argument, oh, well, they developed this vaccine in less than a year. So how can they be right? And it's like, no, they've been developing vaccines for a hundred years. And I would make the argument that it's like. This is a different type of vaccine. This is gene therapy that, that, that is very much different. But all that. the science builds on each other. For sure. For and sure. you know and, what? And they've been working on mRNA technology for cancer for, for at Forever. least a decade, I'd say. Yeah. yeah. And and it's like, you know what? Even like, I don't know what's a good example. Like, I don't know, in your job, the first time you had to make an invoice for a customer. Right. Were you going to be as good at it as the a millionth time you had for to sure. make an invoice for a yeah. customer? And it's like, but everything goes into it. And so when you get the customer who you're giving a discount that you've never given to before, or you're dealing with a new product or yeah. something like that. And like, yeah, that's on a much smaller scale, but it's just very simplifying the problem too. For sure. We had like, like all of medical science forever yeah. was built up to the point where we can make this vaccine that for quickly. Sure. Yeah. And it's not, it's not like they were like, Oh, it's not like they pulled out a blank piece of a blank piece of paper and yeah. started developing yeah. a vaccine. Yeah. And eight months later they were good to go. Right. But I, but I don't think that's the argument. I think w- what the argument, I think you're, you're, you're taking a different piece of that. I think what you said is all correct, but I think more of what the concern is of the fact that it was developed in a year, right? And not the technology, right? There's technology, there's things that got to the point, but to take this, this, se- this DNA sequence, right? And that was an amazing thing, how quickly we were able to sequence this disease. That was fascinating. That was a fascinating piece of science that we were able to get to that point that quickly, right? And that they were able to use that step. Like you say, everything builds upon itself. And now um, tailor this, uh, th- this, this, this treatment, this vaccine um, for this thing that they just sequenced, right? With all this technology that they had in house that they had, on paper thought would work. They had just never had an opportunity to plan it. So now they do all this, they roll it out, they enroll, I think it was 30,000 people they put in the trial. A couple issues. There was not very many old people in that trial, not many, many old people. They took really healthy people for that trial, which was unfortunate, right? All but, well, but, or they did that on purpose because that's to your you point, 
know, or to your point, they don't know. So why would you take, risk it on? Why it. would you take people who yeah. are going to be a higher risk? Why right. would you introduce the factors on your first test? Like yeah. I actually think that that was the right thing to do on your first test. Could why be, would you be like, okay, grandma, you have fourteen pre-existing conditions. Yeah, you're going to be the first person yeah, ever to get okay, the vaccine. Very, very fair, but also, but I, but I would because maybe if expect you do have a problem, com- yeah, but I would almost expect that to be more common knowledge of. If everyone's going to be in on this experiment, this is a, an experiment, opt in, opt out. Not really. There's no opt out. It's pro- everyone in the world opted in. This is an experiment we're all kind of going in on. Not, not, and not well, to put any judgment on that. One of the problems is not everyone did opt in on this experiment. Exactly, right? But I guess I, I know where you're going with this, but so you, to your point about the commercial, they have this commercial where they say, oh, it's 100% safe, or maybe they just say it's right, 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 extremely right. safe yeah, from perspective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem is, they can't explain all this because exactly. they can only do a 30 second commercial. Right. And like you and I, you and I sitting here, you can't even remember exactly what they said in the exactly. commercial. So it's not like, yeah. and no one is going to tune in to a, you know, what, what would what it take to mean? actually educate a person to, uh, uh, what would it take to Three educate hours. a, a significantly already educated person to the level of them being hundred percent comfortable with the vaccine, knowing all the risks. I think, that in a three-hour podcast, like just take anyone like Dr. Dina Hinshaw, or I think if you give give her sit in front of me for three hours and just let me ask all these questions, it may not be. I don't think you'll get to hundred percent like you're saying, but I think letting me come from the perspective and trying to take what I know of these people that have these concerns, and maybe they're not even my concern, but just to bring them up to address them, I think we, that would be so much more effective to get. Maybe it would it wouldn't bring you from like say we're just for for a number, say we're at eighty five percent, there's fifteen that are really digging in. That might not get you all that 15%, but that may be because maybe 10% of those are those people that your parents or neighbors are that are full on magnet people. Maybe there's 5% that are like me that are in the middle and just having those concerns that I would love to be addressed. I honestly, I mean, the come people to- living across from your neighbors also think that, uh, <laughs> the, the airplanes that fly over above them and leave a trail or also yeah. drops being pesticides yeah, on them. to yeah, the exactly. population. So no, yeah. but yeah. Okay, but to your point, the problem is in like a risk adverse society, which they have to take with this sort of thing, mm. is it going to be more effective for Dina Hinshaw to sit down with you for three hours to answer all these questions? Mm. Or do they run a bigger risk of someone taking that interview, cutting things out mm. of context, mm. putting things out True. there? And now instead mm. of the getting the 5% that you might have got you create, plus you push it the other way. from, yeah, you're pushing it the other way, but because it's a lot easier for someone to digest a 30 second clip where at some point in that podcast, he's going to have to say, yeah, you know, this thing is not a hundred percent effective yeah. and there are risks to high risk populations mm-hmm. there. Cut that out of it. And then you're right. Fine. Right. Uh, yeah. I guess that, that the, you're, you're right. I hadn't thought of that, but I mean, but, but what's the alternative? So we just never address these concerns and we just don't, we just keep, well, no, the alternative is what's going to happen. No, it's not it's not the alternative. What's going to happen is the next 10 years they're going to do all these studies on the issue. And then all that knowledge is going to be used in 100 years or 50 years when we have this next this next the next so, pandemic cuz so, it's only going to happen again. Right. So here's so here's another question I have too about this of of uh you know, like there, there's an argument to be made, like if you got to hundred percent, right? Like is, what is that reality going to look like? Right. And I think there's a lot of different countries, like we already said, Israel is one of those ones that people point to because they were so much so early on this, but there's a bunch of examples of countries that are coming out, even look at Canada and the U S and, and, and uh, what they're saying is a couple of weeks ago, they were really driving home that the, everyone in the hospital right now is all unvaccinated, right? Unvaccinated, unvaccinated. It's all unvaccinated people. And now you have all these doctors that come and say, Okay, guys, we got to stop saying that. Like ninety percent of the people coming in here are vaccinated. That that catch it are vaccinated, and not because yeah, that's but, not that's not a that's not a thing on the vaccine. That's just most of the population is vaccinated now. It's you know like yeah. So, th- the, but sense. the messaging was probably valid three four weeks ago, and right. it's not valid today. The problem is someone forgot to turn the switch off at the radio station. But but it, but it's not. But like four weeks. But that's is what they're saying. When those reports were coming out, they were already using data of they were taking it from the. The, all the hospitalization numbers from the start of the pandemic before vaccines were even available, taking those numbers compared to the breakthrough cases, and that's what they were using. And when it was much more 50-50, now it's 9%, and now they're saying, it is looking really bad, we need to address it. But even at the time when they were, it was still, and that's what I'm saying is... Yeah, but again, this just comes, like, this is how complicated the situation is, is yeah. and it takes yeah. so much time to analyze these numbers. But it's here's... but not here's, something you can do overnight. Right, but but here's where, where I, I just, I don't see why people, understanding that it's that complex, and, and I agree with you, that gives me so much more compassion for these people 
that are on the other side of it of it's so complex. How can we call them idiot? How can we call them all these names and, and attribute all these negative things to them when it is this complex and there is all these, you know, like, 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 like as many of these things that we can point to on the one side of, of, you know, these crazy, uh, uh sure. But uh, like, I know where you're going, but yeah. the point, the anti-vax movement started in 2000, I want to say 2001 or like 1997 but, or whatever. But even to tie that to this is so different because no, I, I hated think, that. And I do I'm think they side. are the same and it's someone lied, someone published a yeah. paper and like flat out lied, lied. and was disproved, lied. but the damage was done. Damage was done. And and, and, and now really, you get this yeah. thing where it's like we had diseases that were for all intents and purposes eradicated uh, from the general population, yeah. but like you can't get 100% because people have pre-existing medical conditions right. and herd immunity works because you take those people into account. But herd immunity only works if it prevents you from getting a disease. Herd immunity does nothing if you can still have breakthrough cases. That's why. No, but you're going to have, you're going to have certain people who are always going to get a disease. But the fact the herd immunity, like you have that one dot and they got the disease because it naturally, like these diseases naturally occurred somehow. Right. Like I don't buy into any of the bullshit that like these diseases are man made. There's some sort of natural occurring thing. Mm. But then you had I'd I, I push on back on just on this one. I think every other disease ever in the history of the world, one hundred percent I'm with you. This one there's there's been zero evidence for a zoonotic theory. There's there's nothing to, there's absolutely sure. nothing that's come out yet. Well, and, and, and I also think that there's just been not enough time. To the the point of not, there's, there's not there's been plenty enough time, there's not enough cooperation from china they deleted well, sure. every database they deleted everything right so we'll never know I, yeah, they came I mean, out. so well, there, there's no way for us to know which is convenient but now you would hope that if that was true and they did have nothing to do with that, that's just coincidence or maybe they're covering their tracks on some of the other shit they were doing right might have nothing to do with this but but to my zero, point it's there's diseases not including covid before right. covid yeah that were zoonotic in origin dressed or Treated as eradicated. That started popping up in the last five or five years. For sure. For sure. Because polio. Yeah. yeah. Because everyone got their vaccines and yeah. we were all fine for yeah. 50 years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden people started doubting it because there was a lie. For sure. But but uh, but I also think that is a super, super, super different thing. Because when you take a polio vaccine, you have a 99 point. I think it's something like. 99.7 or 99 point something something percent chance that you will be completely wow. inoculated. There's no way you can catch it even if you come in contact with it. And it's so rare that you come to it. Now you take a, take a vaccine that maybe you get a, you know, a 50% chance of being completely inoculated. You have a 30% chance of, of having a better effect, but you, but it doesn't slow down yeah, but spread throughout the population. That's a complete, but I think those are two different things. They are different diseases. That, that, that will eradicate it. And there's get, a reason why we have the yearly flu shot. Right. You got to stop making noise, you little freak. Just want attention. Oh, that's good belly rubs. Yeah. No, I, I see what you're saying. But I do think, and, more, and, I'm, and I'm less even arguing with you. I'm more so just trying to show the, the point to make sure that people listening that are on that other side, make sure that they feel represented because I think there's just certain things like on almost everything you're saying is like, I agree with you, but I also just want to caveat it with this to make sure that like it's shown in the full prospect of the picture. Like, I, And you've already said about two or three things that I really wasn't thinking about that I, that I hadn't kind of calculated into my picture, but I still think even with all that said that there's a lot to be said about like the path that we're on in this, uh, in, in the good spirited way of, of like what you're saying of like, we cannot have anything impede this because every day that it's impeded, people are dying, right? Like that argument has stood in the way of some real, I don't think even if we get to 100% vaccination t tomorrow, I don't think it changes much. I think we're still going to have cases. I think we're still going to have breakthroughs. I think we're still going to have people dying. Very much less. And, and, and I think it, it helps the situation say that we never had a vaccine in the situation we'd be in. I think that is a very much a better spot. But I think in getting to a world where vaccines are the only option that we would, we stood in, this, in, the, in the face of rapid testing, which was a much better, much better prospect for getting a handle on this in the long run could have been implemented months before vaccines were ever there, but we stood in the way of them because we didn't want it to, to prevent people from, from getting the vaccine. Cause that was what we put, we went all in on. Right. But that's what I'm saying. If a year and a half ago we started mass manufacturing, they, they said in a month's time they could have, I think it was 600 million tests a day. And this is in the States and not Canada, but 600 million tests a day. And you get them in every household a couple times a week. You just nose swab, you test every, every, every household. The big issue would be 
how do you track it? Do you make sure they have to report it to the government or can you, but that's what I'm saying. Do you need it to be reported to the government if this was actually about Well, but then health. you also have to trust people. Yeah. So, and, but, and then, but, have well, you done a rapid test? All the time. I did like four last week. Okay. So <laughs> the, I mean, the problem is like, there is a lot of pieces to a rapid test compared to like directly handing a consumer a rapid test versus directly handing a consumer a vaccine. Sure. I just think, so now we're, we're all hundred percent vaccinated, right? And you show it to go to an Oilers game, right? Oilers game is a bad call. Let's say, uh, just cause it's more spread out. I'm trying to think of like a really bad one. Let's say going to a comedy, a comedy club, Night really club. tight, nightly. Yeah. Something yeah. really tightly packed, right? And everyone shows their vaccine card to get in. Right. So you, you think everybody's safe going in there, but say six of the 200 people we let into this nightclub are, are, are active with COVID and, and, and they're spreading it around. Right. Mm-hmm. Say, 60 people get sick, right? But because 100% of people are vaccinated, right? It starts spreading through the population versus now when you, you back that up, it might be more hassle, might be more things. But if we had started this earlier, we caught more, uh, more people yep. involved in it. They knew now we test everybody. Nobody goes in there. You have 0% transmission. I think that would slow down the rate and actually like getting us towards the goal of. So sorry, your answer would be to test everyone that goes into the nightclub. You, you, I think that would be in a better. Who does that start. testing though? Huh? Who does that test? I think if you if you would have started to where people have these tests where every every household in Canada okay. months ago already has these, so you you could do it on a. I think these are two kind of separate things. You could either do it where What's, you have a, a testing cycle where once or twice a week your family does it because you could all all know swab all put into one thing. If it tests positive, you just know somebody in the household has it. Then you go for a PCR test from that point, right? But so then you. But to my point, you then have to trust everyone. That's to, going to into it, the nightclub to, to do it and be honest about it. For sure. Because the other, th- okay, so like different example, nightclub, everyone going into the nightclub has to be 18 because we assume you're adults. Right. And people lie, as you yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> then not everyone in every yeah. nightclub is yeah. 18 and people are drinking. But also the other agreement that you make when you go into a nightclub and you decide to get like fucked up and drunk is that you're not going to drive home. Right. But people leave nightclubs all the time, yeah. drive home and kill people. True. So it's like, but then, so then people could lie about having a vaccine to print a fake card, print whatever, and, and, yeah, and that'll come. But also, but, but I mean, if you lie about the, if you lie about the vaccine, whether you have it or you don't, you still could be spreading it, right? Like if you tell the truth with the test, at least you, you, you know, right? You're always going to have those people and you're never going to be able to get to it. Except the, the, but test, also you could, the tests are not a hundred percent either. For sure. Right. And you're going to have false negatives that cause a bunch of issues. You're going to have false positives that yeah, have a, have a bunch of issues too, right? For sure, and 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 I see that too. I just think, and the testing also too. It's like the testing is something that people have to do two, three times a week, right. or whatever it be. Whereas you go get the vaccine, you get it twice, yeah, and it's good for six months. But now, even talk about before before vaccines were on the state, before we could get vaccines, and in the stage of the couple months when they were kind of you know it's hard to get, like in the first bit of it. What 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 are you going to tell those families that died? Like when we had an option on the table that could if. I'm not making this argument. This is not an argument I would make, but I think we've made this argument in, in other places. For if, if the goal is we need to do everything in our power to stop people from dying today because there's people dying right now when you have something in your back pocket that you're holding back because you have this new thing that's coming out, which you don't want to you don't want to confer hesitancy on. We're you right. Don't have other options. We're but. right on the outer limit of my knowledge on this. For sure. Like, yeah, me I, too. I'm I, out in the out in the boonies. I don't. Bit. I know we had testing. We've had testing for a while, but like it took a long time. The mm-hmm. rapid 15 minute test though, like was not available before the vaccine. No, it was widely, widely available. The FDA would not approve it. That was the thing because they would not, they would, they would not consider it not a medical device because it gives information, right? That people could, could, uh, could operate on, right? Okay. So it needs to go through a whole different thing, right? And but that- also I assume like, because there's the solution or whatever, when you do the rapid test, uh, I assume by us producing these rapid tests, it would have taken away production for us to do vaccines. Could be. I, I, I would maybe push back on that because I do think they're kind of two slightly separate. I think uh, the testing is a bit more manufacturing, whereas the vaccine is more uh, pharma. Yeah. And, well, and I, I mean, and I heard that argued by a guy that sounded like he knew a lot, but really do I know what is, I, I, sh- I shouldn't be speaking. You're right. I, this is not my expertise either. I just... I would love to hear this address, like like the 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 what I'm hearing from you of pushback. I would have loved to hear that about that, but just the fact that that's not even on the table of that that was never a solution, and that there was things like the FDA that are have so much shadiness around how they've acted throughout this whole pandemic, and that's just one more thing to add on to it of what they did. Like that's my more question. Like my like the NIH, the FDA, um, like the the CDC, so many of these 
the who, like they have, they've been conferred so much power throughout this and have so much questionable shit that they've done throughout this that, and there's no accountability, right? Like we talked about earlier with the, with the politicians that they're just going off of what the, what the who says, right? Like, and there's no accountability, like there's no who elections coming up that we can say, right? Like, and like we talked about, there's already issues with the elections, but I don't know. I just, uh, I have so many questions in so many areas for so many reasons. And I just, uh, yeah. The other, the other issue too is now if we did get to a hundred percent, uh, tomorrow, right? Wave your magic wand in the world. Let's just say in the world, we got that's everybody the, vaccinated. That's right? the key. You have to do it in the world because there's so much, the and world you never, is, you never will. The, yeah. The you world is so will. globalized that like, especially if you need to be boosters all the time, right? Like, yeah. so now you, you, you've got the whole world except for Namibia, let's say. So now you, you really buckle down. And you is get, that a you, real country? Namibia. Yeah. It's in Africa. It's, okay. I, I only know it because uh, yeah. I've had a guy on the podcast that, that is working. Anyway. Oh, I got gotcha. uh, yeah. Um, so you say there's, tw- I don't know population. I'm just pulling this on map. Say there's 20 million people in Namibia. So you send 20 million doses. You get them all fully vaccinated. Okay. So that works for six months, but now do you, now do you keep th- providing mean, the world with it? Right. Doesn't if work. you want to get into the economics of Africa and why, like, I mean, there's a reason the AIDS pandemic is so bad over there when we have all the tools to answer it. This is, that's a whole, I mean, that's a political issue. Yeah. It's money mm-hmm. and it's corruption, mm-hmm. but it's also, I mean, it's also infrastructure. They don't have roads. They don't have watches. Like yeah. they don't, it, it gets back to that whole point of mm-hmm. like your society needs to be at a certain level. Well, they're, before. they're, they're getting roads right now, but uh, who's paying for them all? Yeah, well, China, China is doing some amazing work. Right, well, no, but yeah, depending on what they're buying up so much infrastructure in Africa right now, they're going to own Africa in a couple of years. It's kind of scary. Anyway, but sorry, that was, I was making a whole separate point, but we got off, off topic. So say we just got to hundred percent in the world. Now, what is to happen? And I know this is crazy. Like, this is not, like, I, I'm trying to make, I, I understand that this is not realistic and that people could cut this, but just say that for whatever reason that we didn't see it, there's some sort of carcinogenic part of this vaccine that we didn't know about, that it was not on purpose. It was a complete accident. We didn't know some sort of, it's not carcinogenic, but when it combines with this weird lipid in your body, it becomes carcinogenic. Anyway but it doesn't show itself for a couple of years. If you have a hundred percent of the population that all has this, you will never be able to see it. There's no argument to be made, right? When you, one of the biggest arguments I heard for this is one of the most carcinogenic products in the world, like widespread has been Roundup, right? Like that has so much suffering caused from it. And it took 20 years of court battles to show that the, one of the most carcinogenic products in the world actually is carcinogenic and has uh, actually caused damages. If it's a very low signal, which if there's any signal at all, and very much, there's a probably 99.9% chance that there's no signal and this is completely a moot point. But if it is any signal at all of anything uh, maladaptive or anything that's negative out of it, it will be impossible, impossible to pin it. There'll be no accountability because of that. If you do not have a control group, I would almost argue that you'd want to keep 2% of the population just as a control group to keep some sort of accountability in your pocket just to see what it is, right? Like, how do you even measure the effectiveness if you get to 100? Would you not want that? Like, even if, and that might take the place of, that might take the form of some people that had medical exemption for some reason they can't get it, they have a heart issue. I don't know what it is, but maybe that that's what it becomes. But I just wonder, the idea so to me of 100% worries me a little bit. You're not talking about Roundup. You're talking about like DDT. Like, yeah, there's a there's a better name for it. Right? Yeah. It's, it's 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 weed killer, right? It's a, one of the the most widely used products in the states. It's a Monsanto product. Yeah, but you're also like that is completely I, different. I, completely no, I, different. I know what you're saying, but also that was a product that was used consistently all the time for sure. But 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 I'm not even arguing. Like, and also there was no. I mean, and I would like to think that we have more protections for like people's health of what we're putting in our body than what, I mean, bluntly in the U.S. they had in the 1950s for, for, for environmental controls. Yeah. Yeah. But it was also used way late. But here's the thing. Even when they knew it was causing harm, they had, they were so tied in with the political system that there was no regulation. So it wasn't just the fit. They used this for years and years and years, even past the point that they knew. And now they're getting sued out the ass and it's absolutely crippling. But you can also make the argument with like smoking. For sure. And that. And and, and I could have made that argument, but this is what I'm saying. If what, what I'm, what I'm saying is that with those things that have a loud signal, right? Like that have something that is going to be very apparent, like around, like smoke, smoking may be a better example, right? Like there's, there's a, a very strong tie between smoking and cancer, right? And it's easier to tie things to. If it's not strong, the, the weaker that tie is, the, the harder it is to prove, right? And the less examples you have, like even, but 
I mean, also I would say when they in, well not invented smoking in <laughs> the 1950s when doctors were saying like yeah I guess I think I don't know I think I read something that like some major doc like I want to say like the Surgeon General one time approved for smoking yeah like yeah there's been but lots the science of was I mean the science was bluntly like caveman compared to what they're doing yeah, now with yeah. with medical that's true and like I mean you didn't have Like you couldn't do like major like a ton of the surgeries they do today they couldn't do fifty years ago. Yeah. Like like the science has just come so far in the last since communications really took sure. off. Yeah. No. I just uh you, do you have any concerns like and, and I and I think it's kind of a I, I think this is kind of a moot point myself because of how impossible it would ever be to get to hundred. There will always be yeah. a control. But I think there's look, a reason why we can't wave a magic wand on exactly, this. Exactly, exactly. But 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 I think to look at, I like to look at things in the extreme just to prove the point. Like even if you back it off three steps, the, the, the point still stands just less, less strong, right? Obviously. But now I look at that as now at 87%, like say we're just at 87% because I think that was the last thing I saw for Alberta. I don't know why I, I have that number in my head, but uh, to say that's, uh, so 87 and 13% control, that is still getting to a point where if there is any signal, it's going to be harder to say. Now, if you get to 95, it's getting harder and harder. At what point would it not be best? Off? Like, there's going to be a point where you you could argue where it flips over, right? Where 95 percent is 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 good enough protection, where the benefit of keeping a five percent is is low risk, but the the benefit of having control group is good. Maybe it's 99 one. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's 85 50. Maybe we're already past it. Maybe the best way. But I don't hear any discussion of it. I hear any discussion of this shutdown, which is what worries me because I feel like these are decently well no i reasonable mean, things to ask at least and they probably have good answers for them to push back on that i do think the discussion is there it's just it's so complicated that it's much harder to find right there's but when you hear like really smart doctors try and have these discussions on you which i've seen like really smart doctors there's, there's been congress congressional testimony about certain treatments that have been taken off youtube because they don't think it fits in there that's testimony to congress do you not think that stands as some sort of public record like that worries the shit out of me i mean i haven't I don't know the specific yeah. example you're that talking was, uh, about. That, that's what I'm talking about was Pierre Corey testifying to Congress months and months ago before Ivermectin ever came on the scene, before Joe Rogan got sick. Well, he went and testified to Congress to say, hey, there's some really promising stuff coming out of India. We need to fund research. We need to fund these things, right? And he was very controlled about it. They they, they ripped off YouTube. And this is probably two months before all the, before it came a big political story and all this stuff blew up. But this was way before that. That's been removed. It's never been put back up. Well, Sure, but also YouTube's a private company, so they can do whatever the they fuck they want. They can do whatever they the fuck they want. But here's the thing: and, they're so in bed. And with I'm the also politics. like, I'm not gonna listen. I'm not gonna. I'm also gonna push back on the argument that like, oh, like people testifying to Congress have to be experts in their fields because the U.S. Congress says a bunch of bullshit all the time. For sure, but he's not. He's he's a very well respected doctor. That's all these other guys, right? Like, sure. Yeah. No. I. And and I think that that that. Uh, Kind of my point to this whole thing is that, you know, it is so, like you say, it's so complex and it's so hard to get a handle on that there's a big excuse for people to infantilize the information, right? And I think that was the thing we even discussed in the first podcast of I think they did a lot of damage with that of, and, and I see where they're coming from in the argument that you've made about, you know, it's so complex. How do you dumb it down enough for people to get it? Like, I think that does a lot of damage. I think when they dumb down everything to that six foot rule. I think that did more damage than it helped. I think there's better ways to go about that where we could have tried to actually educate people on how this thing spreads and how instead of scaring them, you could have actually in empowered them. And I think by doing that, right? Like I think, I think that is, uh, I think people are smarter than you, than, than you give than people give them credit yeah, for. I don't. Yeah. I like, I think I, you got to give a chance. I think that's the same issue that I have with the, with the education system. Is that how we think that's how we think people work? That's what we tell them. Well, oh, this is how Adams work. We're going to tell you this bullshit. That's actually wrong but it's the easiest way we can just yeah it'll get you by with it no why are we handing people ignorance instead of handing them knowledge i mean but also too that's how that's like how we discovered it like this yeah. at one point they believed that yeah. this is what the atom looked like right and then once they had that's that true. knowledge they were able to build on it and give you up and get right. another knowledge. get you to the next one but then once you get to that point where you know this isn't right why are we still teaching people the wrong way right like we've moved past that and i feel like we just need to keep upping our expectations of people Big crier. Oh my goodness. This dog is just so hard done by. What do you want? Lay down. Yeah. Lay down. I don't know. I didn't even think this was going to be a COVID, a COVID, COVID conversation. I know. And then we just go full in. So not to change track that. Uh, yeah, absolutely change track. <laughs> well, I'm curious. Uh, 
about the rentals, I think we were just kind of on the last conversation. We were just starting about that the 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 main stage of the university, the main I don't know the main the biggest performance the biggest theater. performance theater on, on on campus is getting a big reno, and that's been kind of uh, I don't know dropped in your lap or it just kind of fell to your retinue that that you've been in charge of it. But that's kind of your first big construction project, and I know uh, how fun those can be going through those with my work and stuff. And I'm curious, how has that been on you the last couple of months? Cause I haven't really talked to you about the ins and outs of it. For sure. I mean, like anything, there's a lot of moving parts yeah. and like any sort of project management. There's, you know, just managing people, the expectations. Mm-hmm. COVID has obviously right, complicated right. everything. Supply chains too in the world are completely, I, I think I saw, uh, and I mean, I don't know if this was like something I saw in news or if it was like a meme I saw, but uh, either way, I think it thing, might be thing. right. Um, that right now off the coast of California, if you like stacked up all the container ships, the containers, no, just the containers on ships, like waiting to be unloaded right now, it would reach from like the bottom of the U S to like the top of Alberta Holy or shit. something ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that's like, it seems insane, but it's like, there have just been delays on everything and that's yeah. the biggest problem. Yeah. So, so is that the biggest thing kind of holding it back right now? You think is supply chain shit? I mean, it's just causing people to change, but it also makes you realize how like, dependent on things you are so mm. open a good example from the project uh open web steel joys which is like it's the the triangle truss that you see it like everywhere like you're at costco like that's what's going across the roof yeah. right so right before our project was about to kick off we needed one i think it was like 60 feet long or something um right before our project breaks ground we get an email another big project's happening at the university and it's like we tried to place our order for open web steel joist today uh we expected like six to eight week turnaround on it yeah and it ended up being two and a half years <laughs> and it's because amazon has been opening so many warehouses oh, they're sucking up all the supplies they're sucking they 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 placed an order for so many warehouses over the pandemic for north america that they've taken two years worth of the supply of this <laughs> trust and so we went back to our engineers and said, do we have any other choice? And we had like a well-respected, like been in the industry for like 30 years, uh, structural engineer on the project. And they said, well, we could design a truss. I've never done that because <laughs> open web steel yeah. joists are just yeah. always been there. Mm-hmm. And so like, that's always the solution. Uh, but yeah, the supply chain right now is like completely messed over. Wow. Uh, we're doing a big event at the University Campus Cup in a few Love weeks. Campus Cup. Love yeah. Campus Cup. Um, and so one of the things is you get a custom shirt for it. Right. Um, and so for years we've been doing these custom shirts. We like we do have it. We have like a very solid process for mm-hmm. how we do it. All mm-hmm. the teams submit a logo, you know. Oh, yeah. Uh, and everyone gets to choose their color out of mm-hmm. all the available colors. We found out a few days before we were getting ready to place all the orders, orange just not available (laughs) because and it's like how connected the world is orange wasn't available as a t-shirt color because we had the new national holiday truth and reconciliation Mm -hmm. day Mm -hmm. which came out of a thing called orange shirt day right and so all of canada supplies of orange shirts are gone and you can't get any from china because china passed a new environmental law i don't know a few months ago few years um what sometime recently yeah so that all the factories where the fabric is made even for shirts that are made in canada you can't get orange fabric anymore because factories over in china can only run three days out of the seven day week now when they used to run seven days to get rid of like the smog and pollution in Beijing. right Weird. and so now you can't get an orange shirt in canada yeah <laughs> like <laughs> it's it's like it's just ridiculous like and i mean some of this is like the impacts of covid and some mm. of this is just like the changing world i mean yeah. you and briefly mentioned labor shortages everywhere yeah yeah the the what's it called the silk road not the silk road initiative from china with the, all the infrastructure in um africa africa mm. uh like that whole initiative that yeah. china's putting on it's yeah. like it yeah things have become so reliant on mm-hmm. You know, we don't do things at home anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Everything's abroad and everything's so interconnected. Yeah. And that was always their, uh, that was always their, uh, oh, what was that old saying about, uh, if, 
if goods don't cross borders, armies will, right? Like about yeah. the interconnection of trade and how that's supposed to bring the world together. But when things get tight and 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 it's not all flowing like uh, you know the 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 rivers of Capistrano, like they say in uh, Dumb and Dumber, right? Like <laughs> it uh, things get tight and and, and things things uh, it really highlights those those pressure points, right? Like yeah. uh, sure that's a that's a huge. Um, boon to democracy when everyone's trading together but when shit gets tight and you're you're very dependent on it that really changes that that dynamic and unfortunately the thing i wanted to bring up is if everything's backed up like that now you're only feeling the first effects of that usually that is downstream and that 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 compounds and and we're probably going to feel the real pinch of it in six months eight months two years from now right like we're going to start seeing like everything trying to play catch up and that's what uh oh absolutely i mean but there's also like i think a potential pro i don't know if this is going to happen mm. we saw a bit of it with like masks and vaccines and hand sanitizer yeah. at the start of the pandemic where it's like people started making this stuff locally when yeah. there's zero yeah. production available maybe folks will and like start making choices yeah i <laughs> like well but maybe and it's it'll cost more like it'll cost it 100 yeah. would cost more to make the cotton or whatever. I don't know what the process is like orange dye. Yeah. That <laughs> whole, or, like it would 100% cost way more to make the shirt in Canada, yeah. but like, you know, then At least it, you have it. Yeah. And then guarantees availability. Yeah. And, and people it, will pay for something made here too. Like the, there's, there's, oh yeah, people, there's cash aid to that, that people aren't fully uh, utilizing right now. But I mean, there's also too the thing it's like, I, would doubt that like the expertise exists anymore in Canada on how to like make a like anything <laughs> a, a big sheet of fabric like yeah. from wool or cotton or whatever you yeah. know whatever it is sheep. yeah sheep. comes from sheep <laughs> yeah <laughs> some sort of animal yeah. byproduct yeah. Exactly. make that make that into something I can cut into the shape mm-hmm. of a shirt I'm sure I could shave this dog and make a few shirts yeah she's pretty fluffy <laughs> she's pretty fluffy <laughs> yeah all that supply chain shit but uh so that's probably been the thing keeping you the most busy is all, is all that. But what uh, what kind of other things? So I think the last time we talked, there was nothing really going for live events. And I imagine there's probably nothing going on for real live mm-hmm. events. But there's at least start like campus events started. Or is that all still kind of uh, no, not really. I mean, the, back I, the thing is like campus gets so concentrated and like it's not. I think the problem is it's not core to the mission of the university to like the university is focused on getting people back in the classroom. Yeah. Once we figure yeah. out how to get everyone back in the classroom, then we'll look at events. Yeah. Sure. Then we can focus on how do we, we do events. I mean, it's part of the, like we were talking kind of about like the mental health aspect of it because yeah, yeah like the, the, the learning is the key part of university, but there's so many like, there's so much part of the university experience that like makes adults. Yeah. I mean, it all comes back to this, like all children have had two years of basic or like at least a year, if not two of like just being, having their development, basically like their personal development and their, their personality like stopped. Stunted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I have a friend who has like a, I want to say a four year old. And he was telling me the other week that, um, they were, he was watching like a rerun to the office and the kid like walked by and was like, daddy, why aren't like they wearing masks or something like that? And it's because the kid like literally cannot remember a time before masks were being worn when you're out in public. It's crazy. And, and how much, uh, we don't realize like this is one of those things where, uh, there's certain ages and and reading facial cues and reading facial expressions and like not everyone thinks that means like, something that's very conscious. It's all subconscious. It's all, it's all that, that underlying AI that happens in your mind of, of the things that you don't even, it's, it's, it's your gut, your perception, man, something, that guy over there, he's got to look and say, I don't know why I feel uncomfortable, but there's something right in that. And that comes from those times. And when you lose out on that, I don't think we understand the effects of what that's going to be long term. I don't think there's any way for us. And I think this will be a really big learning lesson of kind of where we see those effects. But if you think there's going to be none. Well, even so at the orientation program this year, so we didn't run an in-person orientation last year, obviously. Um, but this year we ran a in-person orientation again, and we had usually in a year, there might be like, it used to be our policy that like parents weren't allowed to come on orientation. Mm -hmm. Like, no, your kids at university and we'd have to kick out like one, maybe two sets of parents, uh, when we were running the program. Yeah. This year it was, we could not stop parents. Like there are hundreds, hundreds of parents were there. And that's because like all these kids went through grade 12 digitally they went through it at home they weren't hanging out with their friends after school they weren't like 
you know, getting into trouble by like going to parties and like, you know, doing that stuff, like exploring oh. alcohol and like figuring out relationships outside their parents. And they just, yeah. they were not, I got to see that this summer. Yeah. They weren't emotionally ready. Yeah. Like, or they weren't emotionally at the same level that students used to be coming out of university. Yeah. And like, I don't know if that change is permanent or if, if, you know, it's something that will phase itself out and get back to it. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it's definitely like, society has changed yeah and 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 i don't think i really realized uh how heartbreaking that was but this summer we were out in uh, bc and we're sitting around the fire me and a couple uh young kids that you know i was hanging out with we were just having a couple drinks playing guitar at the at the beach right like not really doing nothing uh, too crazy but this other young guy who's been around the council i've known him for years right a really nice kid he, he was having a few drinks with us didn't know us and uh he had a few too many. I didn't even realize he was dr- really drinking that much, but he ended up throwing up and he felt real embarrassed. And I said, don't worry about it. Like, fuck, this shit happens all the time. I was like, if you go to see, and I was telling all my Duke stories of right? Making him feel like, who cares? Cause he felt guilty. I was like, don't worry about it, man. Like, this is yeah. all fine. I said like, and, uh, and I was like, this is all the lessons you learned. I, I said, uh, you know, uh, like, yeah, yeah, your first, uh, your first year of university was all online. Like, this is what, this is when you would have learned these mistakes. Like, don't feel bad. And he said, mm-hmm. he said, and he, and he looked at me and he goes, Nick, it wasn't, he, he goes, no, it wasn't. I said, what? And he, and, and he just had this sad look in his oh. eyes. He goes, it wasn't just my first year university. It was grade 12 and my first year, yeah. both online. He said, I haven't, well, that he's, summer, he's, like, I I, he's like, I haven't really drank with anybody. And it just broke my heart to watch this kid that like, that such, summer between grade 12 and university is like, you know, groundbreaking. That's, yeah. For <laughs> yeah, a lot like, of people, that's life changing, groundbreaking time. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but to, but to see you lose, so you lose all of grade 12. You lose that summer between grade 12 and university yep. and then you lose your first year of university. Like that, there's so much that you learn in those years that are so important and just the fact and like, and, and that you could see that he understood that he was missing something that he could feel like, oh, I am missing out. It just broke my heart, man. Like I couldn't, I'd never really thought about it that much, but like that, that is the, the other effects that you don't really see, right? Like, oh man, that was sad. Well, I mean, I at least like, it's interesting to hear that like at least he knew that he was missing out on it yeah. because yeah. I think there could also be the like very real possibility that people just don't know. I'm sure there's lots of people around that don't even realize what they miss out on and and they'll probably make that realization when they're, you know, I think when the effects of 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 that loss start to manifest later in life, that's when they're going to start to realize where where they miss it. And I think a lot of times in the work world is where you're going to start to see those things, right? The lack of socialization, the lack of like 2 years of socialization loss is huge. And unfortunately, like I was trying to think of it, like what would be the worst time to lose it? Would it be like nine to eleven, like like five to six, like seventeen to nineteen? Like what is it? And I was thinking, like it's so important at each age. Like yeah, it's just gonna fuck you up in some different way. I don't think there's any. Yeah, yeah there's no like, good time. There's no good time yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I think I like to that point. I read something online of like some grade threes or grade fours or whatever, mm-hmm. like getting bullied in class or something, and got pushed out on the playground, told his teacher and then the next day like but couldn't identify the kid yeah because like they're at that like, development age where like face face is how they recognize yeah. people and that's kind of to your point of like seeing something in mm-hmm. people's eyes yeah um but yeah because oh well now people change their mask every day so yeah. students need to learn a different way to to and i'm sure they will like identify that's, people that's what's amazing is how adaptive humans are and, and i'm sure there'll be some sort of brain plasticity way that they and they probably are in some way, some, you know, silver lining way, they're probably getting skills that we never had of like just mm. ways that they, they're, I'm sure that there's always two signs to every coin and there's well, probably going to be some pauses that come out of it, but it's just, yeah. you never know what that's going to be. Maybe. Although like I see people all the time in mass that I don't recognize. Yeah. And like, I'm sure I was somewhere the other day and I definitely saw someone like I knew, but it took me like 20 minutes after that to interaction figure it out. to figure it out because all I did was see them in their mask. And after the fact, I was like, oh, like, or someone said something to me like, hey, did you see this person? Like today they were in this X spot. Weren't you right there? And I was like, oh shit, I totally was. But no, I absolutely did not like yeah. recognize them or see them. That's weird, hey? Yeah. I just went to throw a, t- a treat to my dog and it landed on her tail. <laughs> I think it's still stuck in the tail. Oh, it must have fell out. Oh my goodness. Uh, when are you going to get a dog? I don't know. You still got Alex's dog at the house? Yeah. Yeah. Still I've, pretty cute. I've, well, I've been trying to. Uh, Alex's dog could probably still get pregnant. I think. Oh yeah. So I've been trying to convince that because it's a like purebred. Yeah, yeah. 
we'll gonna, see. How can I make that decision? I think legal. Well, legally, I think when we bought the bought this dog, we had to sign something that we, like you would spay it at whatever months because it's mm, part of their breed or whatever. But I'm like, but this dog's so cute. I don't. Just, I don't know. <laughs> what, what do I want? Little puppies. Also, Connor McDavid has a Bernadoodle, and it's like the same coloring and just like perfect little dogs like man like what are the odds like come on let's just <laughs> let's just make some babies come on i'll have your babies connor your dogs have babies who knows hit them up on twitter and see what happens <laughs> yeah see what happens hey yeah. oh man maybe i'll help him with his backhand help him with his help him with his uh one timers looking a little fluffy uh, yeah. oh boy everything is though mm-hmm. in all sports yeah 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 but uh, dog <laughs> what is up with you enough so how have things been going for you for the podcast? I mean, I was around a lot at the beginning. Yeah, it's, and you've now moved to this full time. Yeah, it, it, it's going good. Like it's 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 tough because it's going amazingly well. Like I'm so happy with the conversations that are happening. Like the from the time the mics turn on to the time the mics end, couldn't be happier with the types of conversations we're having. Uh, a little bit disappointed myself in 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 some of the things I know I need to be doing on the business side of it to grow it and to and, and to get it into people's ears. Yeah. But I know that's going to come with time, and I know enough. And I know that's uh, I know that's gonna that's gonna come with you know getting the right people, get building a group, building a team, kind of doing it myself a little bit, and it's getting there. I'm just kind of uh, yeah, riding riding that line where I know I need to be doing more, but I'm also just enjoying so much the freedom and the happiness of being away from work because I was just so miserable and depressed with that, that like I'm kind of uh, in between right now. So like mm-hmm. it is going good, but I know that it's, it's uh, there, there's a lot more to be done. So you've been at this, I want to say like two months now, three months, like full time on the podcast. Yeah. So it was October 1st that I went. So yeah, yeah. a month and a half. Month yeah. and a half. Yeah. Okay. And, but like, do you think, like obviously the month and a half is a lot of time. Yeah. I mean, they used to say it was like, what was it? Like three years for like a business to become profitable or yeah. whatever. Yeah. I think in the internet age, it's like that time frame is a lot smaller. Mm-hmm. Do you, I assume you started thinking about that stuff though. Yeah. Like, like, of, yeah. And, and going into this, when I first started, I knew like, when you look at like a podcast or like a streamer or a YouTube channel, it's usually about five years, right? Like yeah. with a business that, yeah, three years for a profitable, but it's a little bit different. Um, but with the internet, that could be, it could be five years and that might be the average, but there's always things that can, you know, make you pop. And if you've done good work and you have a, a good thing for people to go back to, if something catches fire, you can, you can cut that time down. And I have been thinking about that and it's, well, I guess there's a difference. Sorry. I guess when I said like profitable, there's a difference between like profitable where right. it gives you money to like do other things and right. explore other opportunities versus yeah. like gives you money to live. Cause yeah. at some point. You I need to make some money. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and that's where I'm at. Like may, right now it's definitely living off savings. Right. And, and, and luckily I was able to, to save up enough that I, that I could do that, but definitely it's getting to the point where in the next couple months I'd really need to lock down. The, the hardest thing is I know right now I could go out and, and, and get sponsors for the podcast and I know I can hmm. make money with it right now. The toughest thing is it feels like I, it feels like begging a little bit. It feels like Ah, it's it's just hard for me to to make myself do it. it's I have such belief in what this is and what this is going to be that it almost feels like I'm I'm devaluing it or I'm I'm, I'm selling myself short by going and groveling for people to come on board like it, it's it's very tough for me to to get past that and I know I need to get past that if I'm going to yeah. be successful it's just right now that is that is something I'm really struggling with for whatever reason is that I don't want to. it's like I know exactly too that this podcast like uh, if you sponsor right now and it's cheap like you're not just getting what you get, it's going to live on the internet for a long time. So in five years, 10 years from now, when people are still going back to these episodes and listening to these, you know, it's going to be around for a long time. And it's going to be something like, I don't want to just go around and just anybody that'll sponsor me, sponsor. I want it to mean something. I want it to be somebody that believes in the product a little bit. And I feel like that's a huge ask and it's, uh, and it's really holding me back from kind of how quickly I could be, I could be growing right now, but it's almost like choosing to grow the right way rather than the fast way. But yeah like you say, at a certain point you need to make money. So I think that's what's kind of, those two worlds are kind of colliding of finding that middle ground between the two where, where I don't go full, uh, sell out, you know, to, I don't, I'm trying to think of a product I could be selling that would, that would be yeah, some yeah. sort of sell product. But you, you know what I mean? Like I've just taken anything on, you know, doing the McDonald's sponsorship or whatever it was. At, at, well, at you definitely point. don't want a sponsorship that's going to like change the content of your podcast. And so that's probably a big, that is yeah. like consideration. Yeah. I just, like just sitting here, I have no idea. Don't have background in it, but it seems like there's probably like at least like to start like three phases for the like 
for like making money from what something like this where it's like yeah. phase one would be you need to make money so you can reinvest in the product yeah and then like phase two would be so that you can like invest in your life yeah and phase three would be like investing so that you can make enough money that you can like do different things kind of in the same space or like a similar space or for like sure. you know build yeah. off the brand hub I and guess. spoke yeah, yeah yeah start another company that, that build off it that's yeah. that's exactly what i'm looking at right and and uh and and I think that that's definitely kind of how I'm looking at it, but I almost am cr- crushing all those three into one and just kind of doing, trying to do all three at once. Mm. Weirdly enough, like yeah. the money that's coming in is definitely, there's so many things that are money dependent that I want to do for this. That'll bring this to the next level. That's going to be kind of that reinvestment, right? But it's yeah. going to be the balance of, I still need to live too. So I'm going to reinvest as much as I can without, you know, leave myself in the poor house type of thing, right? Enough to keep me going and all that. And luckily my situation allows me to to do all yeah. that. But then also part of that reinvesting is into those kind of side projects or the other things that I want to start. And I mean, I've already told you some of the crazier ideas I have in my head in the long run where I need a lot of money for to start up. But like other things like that, like I have uh, a couple other podcast ideas that I want to start that I've kind of got the groundwork for I've been doing. And, and, and those ones might be more tailored to, to monetization maybe just because of, kind of some of the realities of what it is. I think it's going to be a little bit easier maybe to, to make money with them. Um, and then the other thing, the big, like the two biggest things that I know I need to do right now that are like game changingly important and right in front of me, I just need to take like one step is streaming. I have the computer built. I have the games. I just need to take that step, but I'm so intimidated by the the tech side of it that I just can't seem to get myself to hit that button and start it. Fair. And a clip channel. Oh yeah. Like, because three hours is a lot to ask of somebody, right? To, to start cutting these up into, you know, five minutes, 20 minute chunks and, and putting those out. That is hugely important to the success. Maybe the number one thing I could be doing and I'm not doing it right now. And that's what's eating me up a little bit is to know that I have something that is so vastly important to the success of this podcast that it's right in front of me and I'm not doing it. Absolutely. And it's due to nothing but my own laziness and mental issues or whatever you want to call it right so like that's the thing of like when people ask me how it's going it's hard to answer because it is called like you almost need however long that took me to explain to really say like how it's going right like it it's going well but i know that there's things that i need to do that will make it go even better right yeah 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 i mean the rule is always going to be i'm sure there'll always be things that you want to do and for sure you know even not working there's still like there's only so many hours in a day exactly yeah. and 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 that was kind of i think in my head i thought uh you know like man, work takes up so much of my time. I'm going to be like so free to do shit when I don't yeah. work. And it's like, oh man, the day kind of gets eaten up by all this little stuff, right? Like you take the dog for a couple of walks. That's a couple hours of your day, right? You do this thing, you go, you know, for lunch, you go to a, a jujitsu class, which I've been loving. That's why I've been my obsession since I quit work. I just changed that obsession for uh, jujitsu. It seems I've been, I've been loving that, but you know, that eats up an hour and a half, two hours of your day, right? You're stretching before and after and all that stuff. And you know, maybe there's an oiler game on that night, really like the the hours for work. And if especially if you're not on those to fill those other times around that with really strict regimented work, yeah. you don't get a lot done, right? Like I, I have these big lists of things I need to get done and I maybe muck one or two things off a day and it's like, man, I need to be hitting like six or seven of these, which I know I can do, but again, kind of still in that honeymoon phase of just enjoying my freedom again and kind of remembering what it's like to be happy and 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 all that and, and trying to bring that forward. <laughs> Enough, dog. I think she's got to pee again. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. The only thing, I, one thing I was going to say there was, uh, yeah, I mean, like, I'm sure you could put 12 hours a day into this, yeah. like, every single day, yeah. except then it just becomes work. And, exactly, like, and I wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah, yeah if yeah. you want to be passionate about it long term, it's got to mm-hmm. be, it's got to be, uh, it's got to, like, you got to be working at, like, mm-hmm. a reasonable level to, yeah. to, to get, so that it can be, what's the word for it, like, efficient? Like, no, I for just drawing a blank on it. So it's sustainable long Sustainable, yeah, yeah. That That's exactly, yeah. yeah. No, and that's, that, that's exactly the mindset of kind of, well, I don't know if that's the mindset or the excuse I'm using, but like one of those two things, I I'll let maybe the listeners judge which of it it is. Um, but that's kind of exactly what I'm looking at. It's like, I know what it feels like to be overworked and unhappy and I don't want to get there. And I know that I'm very much on the opposite side of that spectrum now, but I'm still so traumatized by that that I'm hesitant to now walk it back to the middle again and just to get close to that because I'm just so far away from that. That's kind of where I'm at right now, but I know I need to and I'm going to be and I'm going to find that place where maybe it's just a couple hours a day and maybe it's just jumping on. I know I'm going to have a a big step up in in maybe not happiness, but just less self-hate once I do either one of those. Once I start streaming the first time or 
get the ball rolling on Eclipse channel. That's one of the two things that have hit me. And there's a million other things other than that. But I just know that those two are so easily achievable and so impactful. And the fact that I'm not doing them, it's eating me a bit. Well, I no mean, excuse. I'd, I, I'd probably push back on it being easily achievable. Those yeah. are both going to take a lot of work to for set sure. up. For sure. And it's like, it's not that the like knowledge isn't out there yeah. for like you know, figuring it out. It's just like, it still takes time. It's just the time. Yeah. And, yeah. That, and that's the thing. And that's why I know, like, I know I could do both of those things. It's just going to take lots of time. Yeah. And that's where I'm like, I just don't want to jump into another thing. That's gonna, right. Like, and you don't want to do it poorly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And and I think I was kind of hoping that it was always hard to book guests. It's really hard to get people on here. Right. It's a yeah. lot of hours to ask them. Everyone's always a bit nervous, right? They always have a good time once they do, but the actual, like getting people to sit down and everyone always, Oh, cool. can I just have a couple more weeks? Like, like I'll do it. Yes, but I just need a couple more weeks. So then, but then a couple more weeks go by and it's the same thing. So, yeah. and I think I had this wish in my head that once it's just because I'm putting so much effort into work and not inviting enough people. That's what's holding me back. But even when you put it, it is still a motherfucker to get people on. So I think I was kind of hoping that too, but I think that's just a skill I got to get better at. And now that I'm putting more time towards it, I think I'm going to get better at lining those up and getting more organized and, and, and better planning, giving people more heads up. Cause it's probably going to be easier to get people on when I'm not telling them a week before, Hey, do you want to come on next week? Right? Like maybe start planning two weeks or a month ahead and, and start like planning trips out like that. But yeah. these are all things I know I need to do. It's just about the actual getting off your ass and doing them. Oh, right. For sure. Yeah. I mean, two things. I was thinking about that you said like one the like having a list like you only get one or two things done yeah. in a day even when you try to put your mind through it like I feel that so much like even today at work I yeah. know I walked into my office this morning I wrote down five things I had to do yeah. today and like I got two of them done yeah and then it was like oh like 3 30 like started at seven works over like yeah. now I'm gotta head out and it's like damn where'd the day go but yeah. just all these little things just build up and like you get emails or scratch and yeah it's crazy and, and and that and and this is not a new issue right like it no, used to no. always happen but i always had that excuse of work because you'd get pulled a million different directions at work right and you're always putting on fires and things are popping up so it's it yeah. makes sense. Like, oh yeah, like I only got two things off my list today, but look at all the other shit that come up, right? Now I don't have that excuse and I'm fine. Oh man, I'm still only getting two things done, but the, the I don't have that work excuse to not to, to lay all those other things out, right? Like, so yeah, it's, it's just about finding that balance. But also when you work for, I don't know, my whole life always being inside a structure that has momentum built into it, right? If you don't, if you're not running forward, you're going to get left behind type of thing, right? It's, it's very much forcing you to keep, keep on your shit to now be completely if, if I don't, if I don't do stuff, the podcast doesn't happen. If I don't yeah. put an episode, if I don't record an episode, there's no episode going up on Monday. There's nobody else in it. It's there's just no one me. to catch. Yeah. Like, like there's, yeah. You and there's no one them. to push. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just, what get, which is not a bad thing. I think I'm going to really enjoy that. I just need to learn how I work in that new situation in that new framework, which is a little bit new to me where I'm so used to being, you know, just almost with work, you're almost kind of pushing back and, and, and trying to do as little as possible because you know you have so much and things are going to be popping up all the time that to keep your board open enough to be able to handle those, you kind of have to do that. Whereas this is the complete opposite where you have to completely 180 turn where you're trying to do as much as you can because there's always going to be, you know what I mean? Like it's that. Well, yeah. And it's also too, I think it's like you, you have to learn how to do without the push and like yeah. do it differently. And it's like you're switching mindsets. Yeah. It's like you've been like working for someone else yeah. since you left university mm -hmm. and even then like university there's this whole system designed to make sure you yeah. get your sign yeah. And, yeah it's almost yeah. like the, the the biggest example of that just pushing you forward the momentum of university kind of pushes you through to the end right yeah. i didn't do anything i just followed like show up just, here go here yeah made, you know? made the deadlines and stuff like exactly that, but, exactly so you know it's going to take you longer than a month and a half to to completely like shift those like paths in mm -hmm. your mind mm -hmm. to oh if I take my foot off the gas, it's just a hard stop. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And, and, and to feel that a couple of times. Yeah. And then the other thing too, is still being before I can move to Edmonton, right? Before I get, that's another thing that's on the list of that's a lot of work to find a place and yeah. to do all that. But also now being split between a four hour drive. So when I come up for a week of podcast and then I have to go home and I'm mm -hmm. still a bit in between, you know, the dog and that, like I'm, I'm just need to get into a new routine of this new, this, it's still all fresh and there hasn't really been much to settle in. And I think I'm expecting a lot more of myself than maybe I should be having said all that, yep. but it's just about expectations and having the right idea. And, but what the nicest thing is what balances all out is all that doesn't fucking matter. Cause I am happy. Yeah. Like, fuck. Am I happy, man? Like going to bed and knowing that like, I don't have to do something. I like, I'm, I'm just not that, that dread, that, that anxiety of what is going to go. Like I know whether I fail or do great or have a great day, it's all on me. It's yeah. not going to be external. It's completely on me. And even though 
yeah, that sucks when I'm not doing good and it's all on me. And, and like, like I said, but I would take that a million times over like that feeling like, sure. That's a shitty feeling too, but that shitty compared to the shitty I was feeling before is night and day. And I don't even want to compare the two because like, I'll take this all day long. And I, and I know I could fix that tomorrow if I really wanted to buckle down. I just, I'm not choosing to right? like that's, huh. but that's such a different feeling, but, but like to know that I can feel this way and, 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 and to not have to hold back on anything I say and to know I can say anything I want on this podcast to talk about smoking weed, like to talk, like it sounds so silly and insignificant probably to a lot of people listening, but that means a lot to me of like the, the, the being held down and, and to have so much frustration over like work things that were building up and not to be able to talk about it here. Now, at least, you know, so I'm still, I'm not hundred percent stepped out of work too. I'm still doing meetings. I was on meetings this morning and I still stepped in. I stopped in white card on the way here and, and talked to our safety and our HR and had a little discussion over what they were dealing with. Just kind of stuck my nose in what were what are you discussing, right? Because I'm still got the itch and I still care about the company. And I want it to be good. So I'm still doing a little bit of that too. And yeah. trying to find that balance of how much I can give them. And I don't want to leave them in a rough spot. So Absolutely. considering all that, I think I'm maybe being a little bit harder on myself and I'm probably doing a lot better with the podcast that I have. And oh. the, the one that released today, I'm really proud of. And it's nice to have an episode, uh, I did with, uh, who do you release today? So it was a girl named Ashley Severson. She grew up in Slave Lake and she had uh, breast cancer and had a crazy story of, they wouldn't really believe her at first, but she knew something was wrong. So she really mm. pushed for herself and got scans and they found it. And then they, uh, misdiagnosed it as uh, stage four. So there was a period where she thought she wasn't, she had a limited time on this earth and just oh talking about God. how she mentally dealt with that. But then again, that didn't, some things weren't really added up. She didn't feel right about that either. So she really, really pushed, got kind of, uh, you know, had to find her own doctor to do a biopsy on her lung to make sure. Anyway, crazy, crazy fucking story, but how open and vulnerable she was about the process. And I learned so much about, I thought I knew what it was like to, to, to deal with cancer because I've had people around, like I had a coworker that went through it and I, you know, went to her first chemo with her and sat with her and I thought I had a good idea, but the way she opened up and told me about of what it feels like to go through it and, and, and to not sugarcoat it, not to cut any corners, to really give you the full description. And I feel like because of the, the intimacy of it, I was able to ask all those questions that are probably an inappropriate question, but because of the safety of the space you created, I was allowed to ask them. And I feel like just what that created, and I've already had a few people today message me and say like, hey, like that was impactful. And I like, you know, that's what makes me feel good, right? Like all that other shit and all the, you know, clip channel and, t- and t- that's not what I got into this for. Yeah. With those messages I got today about that, that's what I got into this for. And the fact yeah. that I'm doing that, right? Like, so that means a lot to me. And like, when I'm, when I'm like, uh, when people ask me how the podcast is going, I almost want to say by, by, by society standards or by my standards, because by my standards, it's all going great. This is awesome. This is exactly what I want. But by society standards, that's marked in how much money it's making all that. Maybe it's not doing so good, but does that really matter to me? Not well, really. Yeah. I mean, you need to build up like, you need to build up a good product yeah. first. Like, yeah. 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 You know, and having like, I mean, those stories like that, that you were just talking yeah. about probably really will like help people other people out to hear it there's not really there's not a whole ton of forms Mm -hmm. for something like that Mm -hmm. and like people go through that stuff all the time exactly like it's always a very private thing and i think Mm -hmm. back to like mental health in the pandemic if there's one thing that we've learned it's like you gotta like talk about it and you gotta Mm -hmm. i think it helps people just to know that other people are going through the same things for sure 100 percent, it does and and that's uh that's what i'm excited for people to hear and i hope you know maybe it it, you know maybe someone will might listen to it and have a little bit of impact, but maybe not totally. And then maybe four or five years from now, they go through something where, man, I might go back to that episode and re-listen to it. Cause I remember it helped me at that point. And then that information at that time when they need it, it's going to serve them a different way. And it's going to live on the internet forever. Mm-hmm. And there'll be people that this helps today, but there's also going to be people 10 years from now where it helps. Right. And sure. There may not be tens of thousands of people listening to the podcast right now, but eventually I believe there will be. Yeah. And that episode will still be there and it will still have that impact. And Ash will be coming back on, I'm sure telling the story and, and, and filling in the gaps and, 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 and showing, you know, the, how it goes moving forward. But that's exciting to me of like where it's going and all those next steps and, and all the things that may not be apparent to people right now, but I see on the horizon, right? That's what excites me. And it's, and it's weird to be excited over things that nobody else can see for it, but like, it doesn't matter. If it yeah. excites me, it excites me, right? Like that's, uh, that's Absolutely. what matters at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, well, it sounds like you're doing great with it. So, you know, congratulations. Thanks, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate like, it. Like, I mean, making that jump is huge yeah. and, like, you know. Yeah, it's been pretty to, scary. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, but it, I've had tons of support, too. And some of the some of the things that people have said of, of just, like, the, uh, the, the words of encouragement and of uh, – um, oh, encouragement's not the – 
the doesn't fully describe of like people giving me props for the balls. I, I'm just saying like I'm so proud of the 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 cojones that you're taking, and that and, and that feels like that that feels very good because I the biggest part of it is how scary it is to make that move, right? And for oh, people yeah. to say like, "Hey, I'm so proud of you that you're making it. I believe in you too." And I know it seems scary, but like what you see, I see that too, and that just like that fills you up like in some different way, right? Like like I think I mentioned this to you. That first time, like before we did the first episode, we went out the night before and we had a couple beers there on that on that Friday. Yep. Um, I was telling you kind of like how nice it was because at that point, you were the first person that like when I started talking about some of the bigger goals and like I want to do this and I want a, a YouTube channel, I want a website and all this, you didn't really, you didn't laugh at me, you didn't, you know, or maybe you laughed at me, oh, you're a crazy fucker, but like you responded with, okay, well, if you want to do that, this is what you're going to do and, and, and you helped me kind of bat it across and talking, you know, I was for probably like a week, two weeks after that, I was so energized because of having someone that like uh not believes in you the same way but at least um validates it with 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 like con- constructive things to move forward like that gave me such a juice and i found the same thing with making the sleep it brought so much of that out of like my support system to bring that to me and that was another thing that really you know charged up the battery especially kind of going from that time where i was at one of my lowest points that really recharged me for this and kind of set me up for for moving into it so i just got to say a huge thankful for all those people that said all those nice things that really uh really has an impact and it really matters right like i feel like so many people don't realize how how little it takes to say a nice thing but how big those impacts can be on people when you do right like man, well i mean it takes Yeah, it's pretty easy to say I'm going to start a podcast. And even in today's world, it's pretty easy to start a podcast. But, you know, the hard to keep them going, (laughs) hard to keep it going. And especially the jump from like leaving your job to like, okay, I'm going to do this full time because, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty. And, you know, it's uh, takes takes time to build stuff. For sure. You know, like absolutely. Like congrats to you for the the push through. And, you know, here you are. It's sure it's only been a month and a half, but, uh, you know, yeah, I think you're right when you're saying you're being a little too hard on yourself. And Thanks. I appreciate it's, that. Yeah. You know, 20, probably 20 years of living with, you know, there's always a deadline. There's always someone mm-hmm. to push you an assignment. Mm-hmm. So it's going to take, it's going to take a minute to, yeah. to, to, to figure reset it that. out. Yeah. 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 To reset that expectation. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and it's, uh, and, and I think this might sound a little bit weird and a little bit woo woo for, for people, but like, uh, those two different modes of kind of the, the, the built in momentum and the self momentum kind of style of like university kind of makes oh, you, you might, oh, sorry to cut you off. What she got? What she got? You little fucker. This dog gets into everything. God, you're cute. I don't even want to get mad at you. Thanks, man. Uh, she's chewing on a bottle of uh, alpha brain. She wants to get some Joe Rogan. Uh, uh, oh, what are they called? Shit. Now my brain is, uh, on. Should I take more of them? <laughs> Anyways, what was I even saying? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Dog, you ruined the whole podcast. Look what you did. Don't look at me so sad. Anyways, I mean, it's going good. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. going really well. Yeah. It's going really well. Get there. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Well, well, I don't know how long it's been. It's been a, it's been a couple hours. It's been a couple hours. Okay, good. Two two fifteen, a little bit shorter than our last one. A little bit. Uh, a little bit, a little bit longer than I'm sure some of the ones we'll have in the future, but it's really yeah. good. It's always nice to catch up with you. Absolutely, nice to I hear mean, what's going on. Great to hear about what's going on with the podcast, and you're yeah. doing so well. I mean, it's, yeah, I appreciate uh, it. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's, there's a lot. There's it a is. lot out there, and I'm sure, I'm sure it's only going to get bigger and better. Yeah. So, yeah, and I'm, I'm excited. Like, uh, so much of my, uh, like, all the COVID stuff is you know, really none of it's affected me that much. Like I'm, 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 I feel like a lot of times I'm arguing for, 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 um, oh, what's the word? Like, uh, it's the, not the precedent, like the, I'm, uh, I, like I'm arguing the essence of it, not the actual reality. Cause like none of this has affected me all that much. Like my life hasn't changed. I didn't go to many places before. Like I, yeah. you know, n- none of these real rules have affected me. I don't listen to a lot of them. I never follow them right from the start. But what I'm excited about is, just to get to the end of it because I'm so excited of the next steps of like where we can take this podcast to. If I can start traveling and, you know, going down the States and interviewing people, have people fly people up, you know, having, uh, you know, the comedy scene in Edmonton kind of kick back to where it was, where there's big names coming through all the time and trying to get in with that. Like there's just so many things up on the horizon that I'm excited about. And, and, uh, you know, working with you guys with the, with the, with the, the SU and, and who you guys bring in, you know, like I think, uh, there's just so many ways and working with like Nate and all these different ideas I have that are all kind of dependent on, on things getting back to normal. It's like, there's no sense in crying about when that's going to happen. 
I'm just going to get excited about that and fill anything before that with whatever I can do now. But like mm. to, to have that to look forward to is also another, uh, another way of excitement that I kind of look at it is just like, what is, uh, what is going to be on the next, uh, yeah. the next couple of hills that come over. So yes, COVID and yes. the podcast, you don't think, or, uh, I don't know, what, what am I trying to say? What I was going to ask was, like, you don't think COVID affected you at all, but do you think you would have had the extra time and energy and drive to start something like this if COVID didn't hit? I don't think I would have uh, started something like, or I shouldn't say, I think I always eventually would have ended up here, but I think it would have taken years more because always what I had heard of, like, podcasts, I always said, uh, has to be in person. You can't do Zoom. You can't do Zoom, right? Like that, it just doesn't work. It just yeah. doesn't work. And I always heard that and I always knew I want to start a podcast, but where I was living up in GP, like I would have, like other than Zoom, there's no real way I could do it. But when COVID hit, everything kind of had to go to Zoom. And that was what my excuse was. That was the the straw that broke the camel's back. I was like, okay, yeah, the Zoom. Yeah, the whole world had to figure out how to do things remotely. Exactly. So the that was- The tech was always there. Exactly. And I knew that eventually, obviously in person was I want to do like this. This is so much better than, than trying to do it on Zoom. Yeah. And actually I hadn't done a Zoom one for a while. I did one on Friday and it was a little bit of- it's, it's different. It is a bit tougher. It's a, it's a lot different of a thing. I kind of had to remember the, the pacing yeah. and, and that, that little bit of a, a jump, but, um, I knew that eventually in person is going to come, but why not get the skill of zoom interviews too, right? Like, uh, there might be someone that ends up being, you know, 80 years old or can't travel or whatever, or maybe, you know, is, has a, has a criminal record and can't leave Australia. I don't know whatever it's going to be, right? Yeah. Like, and hopefully I can travel there eventually, but I, I honestly don't think if it wasn't for COVID, I wouldn't have started this one I did. And I, and I think I might've, uh, who knows, maybe I would have had a kid or maybe would have done something that would have changed realities. I never would have started. Who knows? So, yeah. you know, I don't want to, uh, you know, I don't want to speak, uh, speak positive of COVID in any way, but you know, you got to find the silver lining somewhere. And I think that's it right there for myself is I don't yeah. think I would have done this. Well, and I mean, my point is kind of, so COVID did affect you, whereas, you know, yeah. it really did change your life. For sure. For, for the yeah. positive. Yeah. 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 And, and, and on the negative side, it all, you know, comparatively, I, I had it pretty good. All right. But I think we should probably end it there because this dog's going to go nuts if I don't let her out in about three seconds here. Yeah. I was going to say, do you have a filter to uh, get <laughs> rid of really. the dog whining? No, I, I think, uh, <laughs> I think everyone's just going to have to deal with that one for this one. She's going to be a uh, co-host on the, uh, on the show, just like she likes to be on everyone. But yeah. uh, thank you so much for coming on again, Brandon. It's always a great time. She'll be on many times in the future and we'll hopefully have less COVID talks on the next one. Uh, yeah. But, but I also just want to say thank you. And, you know, I don't think we, we disagreed on a lot of those points, but it was done with love. You know, like I, you know, I feel like that was great conversation. That was so rewarding to be able to actually have a good conversation about some of these things with you. And you really, you know, I feel like so, it, so, so many people are so unwilling to have this conversation that I've had it in my head so many times that it's nice to have someone to kind of say like, well, you did, you missed this. You miss it. I'm like, oh shit, I am. But I feel like I'm, I'm not getting the opportunity to see where I'm missing stuff because I haven't had someone that's reasonable like yourself to have the conversation. So thank you very much for doing that. I think that's going to be a good example for people that say, you know what? These conversations can be had. Dog, enough. Enough. Just so, knows we're done. Just knows. She's got to, yeah. she, she wants to play with you. That's what it is. She wants to jump all over you. Yeah, all right. I know. She's got that look in her ass. Yeah, she does. Well, no, man, thanks for having me. It's always a good time. And yeah, I mean, event, hopefully eventually we have something else to talk about. Yeah, COVID, exactly, exactly. Because we're allowed to do other yeah. things. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. All right. Talk to you soon. See you, Brent. Bye. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Sorry, I was such a downer in the intro. I almost been thinking about re-recording that whole thing because it was such a uh, a downer Debbie little thing. But I'm just being honest with you guys. That's how I felt about it. Um I'm really happy to have Brendan back on the podcast. I really appreciate him. I think he's a really smart and intelligent guy. And I hope you guys learned something from him um, and all the great points he made today. Um, maybe pick something out for me. Maybe I'm being too hard on myself. Who knows? Um, but I hope either way you enjoyed this. I hope I can get uh, some other episodes out to you this week. If not, I'll see you on the, on uh, Monday of next week. You know we're always here. We're always going to have an episode for you. And I appreciate everyone that... Uh, listens and subscribes and and uh, passes the episodes on shares the episode posts that really goes a long way like and subscribe if you're on uh, youtube all those things um i've heard some people telling me that i'm shadow banned on uh, instagram and stuff and that when they search me they can't find me and you know i <laughs> i knew with all the shit i talk about facebook and instagram and all the powers that be i figured that was coming so uh please let me know if you do see that if you search my name and you can't find it you search the von dubcast and it doesn't pop up or you have to you know type it in word for word to for it to even uh, uh pop up please let me know because that's always just good information for me to have um if not just follow me regularly and all that stuff twitter instagram all goes a long way really appreciate it guys i'm so thankful um for you guys listening and uh 
all the kind words I received in Slave Lake of the people that are proud of me for making uh, for making this jump to to try this and and the only way I can do that and and is when you guys reward me by giving me your time to uh, to take a swing on me and see if uh, oh don't take a swing on me please that was the wrong way to say it take a take a chance on me let's say and uh, give me a couple hours of your time or hopefully not a couple hours hopefully you guys are hearing my, hearing what I have to say and are trying at least you know one point two five speed or one point five if not the two um, so. Uh, Yeah. Other than that, have a great day and I will see you guys on the next one.